Special team starters for the Lions. So much of life these days is rushing around from one place to another. Sometimes you just want to enjoy the journey on the way to the destination. And part of what makes it a little more enjoyable is an appreciation for the folks who help you get there. At Ingalls, we know that the people who send you on your way are the same ones who keep you coming back. I think you should take it for a spin. Are you serious? <laughs> Ingalls, all the ingredients for fun. The first date. Only one chance to make that first impression. Don't worry, this might be new for you, but Ingalls has been there before. From flowers to the freshest ingredients, we have everything you need to put your best foot forward. I'm so sorry. Remember, you can't get to happily ever after without once upon a time. Ingalls, all the ingredients for family. gentlemen today marks the final home game for our Tusculum football seniors at this point we wish to honor them and their families for all their hard work and dedication to the pioneer program our first senior is student assistant Corey Seswick Corey has been the team's video expert over the years and is majoring in sports management from Altamont Springs Florida Corey Seswick 
D. Alfred is a two-time all-conference quarterback where he totaled 133 tackles, 32 pass defended, and eight career interceptions, which are fifth in school history. His punt return average is fourth in TU history, while his 43 punt returns and 538 return yards are third in the record book. He is majoring in sports science from Griffin, Georgia, D. Alfred. Christian Bell has appeared in 18 career games where he has four special team tackles and a rush for 11 yards. He is a member of the commissioner's and athletic director honor roll and graduated last spring with honors with a degree in sports management and is enrolled in graduate school. From Saudi Daisy, Christian Bell. Will Boney has played in 27 career games at fullback where he has six career carries but four of them have gone for touchdowns, giving him the best touchdown to carry ratio in school history. He is a member of the athletic director's honor roll and graduated last year with a degree in business management and is working on his MBA. From Mayo, Florida, Will Boney. Kibion Broadwater will be starting in his 40th straight game on the offensive line. He earned all-conference and all-region honors last year and was named the team's MVP. He is also this year's reigning homecoming king. He is a member of the athletic director honor roll while majoring in psychology. From Gaffney, South Carolina, Kibion Broadwater. Grant Cordell has been a versatile contributor to the program throughout his TU career and has been a valuable member of the offensive line as well as the Tusculum University fishing team. He is majoring in business administration from Saudi Daisy, Grant Cordell. Deshaun Davis has played in 35 games where he has 36 catches for 437 yards with a touchdown and is majoring in sports management from Rock Hill, South Carolina, Deshaun Davis. Isaiah Dunn will be playing in his 28th career game today, where he has 66 tackles, including six for loss, one sack, and two interceptions. He is a member of the athletic director's honor roll and is majoring in business entrepreneurship. From McDonough, Georgia, Isaiah Dunn. Josh Forrest has played in 36 games on the defensive line, totaling 94 career tackles with 10 sacks, 17 tackles for loss, recovered three fumbles, and returned an interception for a touchdown last year at Catawba. He is a double major in business management and sports management from Lawrenceville, Georgia, Josh Forrest. Romeo Gallegos is wrapping up his Tusculum career today where he has been a long snapper with the program. He is majoring in sports science from Murfreesboro, Romeo Gallegos. Malik Goodman earned all conference and all region honors at free safety last season. He has 187 tackles with 13 for loss, three sacks, three interceptions, and 19 passes defended. He is majoring in criminal justice from Jacksonville, Florida, Malik Goodman. Javon Green has played in 31 career games where he has made 47 tackles, including 12 for loss, with a fumble recovery and seven quarterback hurries. Off the field, he has been the play-by-play -play voice for Tusculum Lacrosse, women's volleyball, softball, and baseball. He is a member of the Commissioner's and Athletic Director's Honor Roll while majoring in English Journalism. From Savannah, Georgia, Javon Green. <laughs> Brandon Harrison will be making his 19th appearance today on the offensive line after transferring from East Central College. He is majoring in Environmental Science and is a member of the Athletic Director's Honor Roll. From Decatur, Mississippi, Brandon Harrison. Solomon Hunter is playing in his first and only season with the Pioneers after transferring from Alabama A&M. He has played in nine games while posting 17 tackles, 
four for loss, and one sack. He is majoring in graphic design from San Antonio, Texas, Solomon Hunter. David Johnson has totaled 83 tackles with 12 for loss and three sacks. He has posted five interceptions over the last two years and has 18 career passes defended to his credit. He is majoring in graphic design from Greenwood, South Carolina, David Johnson. Connor Johnston has played in 31 career games where he has eight receptions for 85 yards and two touchdowns at tight end. He also scored the game-winning two-point conversion in Tusculum's 2017 overtime win at Newberry. He is majoring in business management from Warner Robins, Georgia, Connor Johnston. Andre Jones has played in 11 career games where he has contributed on the offensive and defensive line. He is majoring in business management, IT, and is a member of the Athletic Director's Honor Roll from High Point, North Carolina, Andre Jones. Carter Mangle is wrapping up his second and final season with Tusculum, where he has played in 16 games with seven catches for 89 yards at tight end. He is majoring in sports science and is a member of the Athletic Director's Honor Roll. From Bogart, Georgia, Carter Mangle. Chris Matthews will be playing in his 40th career game today, where he has tallied 111 tackles with 19 for loss and three sacks with a fumble recovery. He is majoring in business administration and is a member of the athletic director's honor roll. From Lehigh, Florida, Chris Matthews. DeAndre Milner has recorded five tackles with a sack during his Tusculum career. He is majoring in physical education from Piedmont, South Carolina, DeAndre Milner. Ty Oliver has been with the program for the past two seasons since coming to Tusculum from Chipola College. He is majoring in business administration from Chipley, Florida, Ty Oliver. Matt Price has played in seven games during his senior season at tight end and on special teams. Matt is majoring in sports science and is a member of the athletic director's honor roll. From Charlotte, North Carolina, Matt Price. Jordan Shippey is wrapping up one of the best careers by a Tusculum running back. Jordan has rushed for 1,917 career yards, which are fifth in school history. He has accumulated 2,291 all-purpose yards while scoring 12 touchdowns and a two-point conversion. The 2018 All-Sack Honoree ran for a school record 258 yards last season versus Limestone. He is majoring in business from Gaffney, South Carolina, Jordan Shippey. Colton Strickland, a 2018 All-SAC defensive lineman, has totaled 105 career tackles, including 17 for loss, 8 sacks, and 13 quarterback pressures. Swag is majoring in sport management and is a member of the Athletic Director's Honor Roll. From Naples, Florida, Colton Swag Strickland. Ashton Watson has played in 24 career games and has been credited with 34 tackles, including eight for loss and three sacks. He is a member of the commissioner's and athletic director's honor roll and graduated from Tusculum last spring with a degree in psychology and is enrolled in graduate school. From Ultua, Ashton Watson. Hunter Wiesmore has appeared in eight career games at quarterback where he has passed for 320 yards with five touchdowns. He is a member of the Athletic Director's Honor Roll and is a pre-med major. 
from St. Cloud, Florida, Hunter Wiesmore. Shavis Williams has made 31 receptions for 486 yards and two touchdowns. He has 655 all-purpose yards, including 169 yards on kickoff returns. He is majoring in sports management and business and is a member of the Athletics Director's Honor Roll. From Asheville, North Carolina, Shavis Williams. And our final senior, Devin Woodson, has made 70 tackles, including eight for loss and three sacks. He was named to the COSIDA Academic All-District Team and the D2 Athletic Directors Association Honor Roll. He is majoring in sports science and is a member of the Commissioners and Athletic Directors Honor Roll. From Central South Carolina, Devin Woodson. Ladies and gentlemen, as I line up on the sideline, taking up three quarters of the field, let's all give a round of applause for the senior class of 2019. Fans, don't forget to bring your ticket to Casa Nostra Italian Cuisine located in the Greenville Commons and receive 15% off your meal any day of the week. Enjoy delicious appetizers, pasta dishes, sandwiches, or their specialty pizzas, and much more. Casa Nostra is the official ticket sponsor for the 2019 Tusculum football season. Today, the Tusculum Pioneers look to continue their winning streak, winners of three consecutive. After starting the year at one and five, the Pioneers are looking for their fifth win of the season, which would be the third consecutive year that they've been able to come up with five wins. Today, they'll take on the Mars Hill Lions after a preseason conference pick number seven, find themselves tied for third in the South Atlantic Conference, five and three against Division II opponents. They're also looking at the potential of a postseason berth. Hello, everyone. Brian State, as we get set to bring you the 36th renewal of the Battle of Sam's Gap, Tusculum, and Mars Hill. For the Mars Hill Lions, it has been a one-man wrecking crew this year. It's been Craig Rucker, the Craig Rucker Show, 1,116 yards receiving leading the nation in that category with including 13 touchdowns as well also into the top five ranked number two in the nation Craig Rucker is the consensus All-American from 2018 and the defending conference offensive player of the year looks as if he'll have a good strong case to become a two-time conference player of the year and a two-time All-American as well Jimmy Urzua has taken over the ranks as the starting quarterback for Mars Hill and he is leading the conference 181 yards passing per game He's thrown for over 1600 yards and his 16 touchdowns also is second in the league and 38th in the nation for the Pine Pioneers today, it will be a strong case for get that fourth consecutive win. They will do so without some key personnel, however. A Pioneer football team that will be without the services of Jordan Shippey. Jordan Shippey is looking to become just the fifth player in school history to go for over 2,000 yards for a career. He needs just 83 yards. If he does not play today and is not able to do that against Carson Newman next week, then he'll finish just shy of that 2,000 plateau. That will be a huge miss for the all-conference back for this Tusculum Pioneer team. But infilling for him has been Thurlow Wilkins. For a second consecutive week, Wilkins has been able to go off for over 100 yards. Last week, with 153 yards to his credit, a career best, a 63-yard rushing touchdown, boy, a second consecutive touchdown for him. The running game will also be complemented by Maurice Gamillion, who almost became the first time in school history where we had over three backs go over for 100 yards in a contest with with 83 yards last week. 
But it's been the Pioneer defense that has been leading them. The linebacker duo of Jackson Cawthon and Ivan Hogan's have paced the Pioneers so far this year. Cawthon leads the team with 60 tackles, including a Tusculum best 13 for loss, including three sacks. He also had two interceptions to his credit and returned one for a touchdown two weeks ago against Pembroke. Hogan's is second with his 58 tackles, including eight for loss and four quarterback hurries. The all-region uh, the all-region honoree joined Tusculum's 200 tackle club against Pembroke. With his 30 career tackles for loss, he's ranked in the Tusculum top 10. D. Alford is fourth with 38 tackles, but is tied for the team lead with 12 passes defended, which is fifth in the conference, including three interceptions this year and nine pass breakups. But his biggest threat for this Pioneer team, not only on defense, is his punt return team, averaging a conference best. 14.4 yards per return, also ninth best in the country. And for the year, he's, his average ranks fifth in Tusculum history, while he is second in both punt returns and punt return yards as well. He is just five return and 18 yards away from the single season record posted by All-American Donald Amaker. It's a pioneer team that also with senior David Johnson shares the team lead with 12 passes defended. He had two interceptions last week giving him five now for his career, including three sacks for his career. It'll be a day where the Pioneers will honor their seniors, 27 seniors to be exact, will be playing in their final home game of their Pioneer career. In the 36th renewal of Tusculum and Mars Hill, it's the Battle of Sam's Gap. It's coming your way next here on the Pioneer Sports Network. Tusculum University is Tennessee's first university. Established in 1794, Tusculum's beautiful campus is nestled in the foothills of the Great Smoky Mountains. Students from 31 states and 15 countries have found a home here. With nearly 60 areas of study, Tusculum can help you pioneer your path to success. Visit www.tusculum.edu or call 423-636-7300 to discover the pioneer experience for yourself. It's fine. It'll be okay, okay? Nobody nobody cares about the flowers. Who needs flowers at a, a wedding? At Ingalls, we know that the best of plans don't always go according to plan. My best friend's getting married today and the florist never showed. That's why we're always there when you need us. What are their colors? Purple and cream. With smiling faces and helping hands. No one cares. No one cares. You will look great. Flowers are not important. And where is Holly? Uh, have you any anyone seen Holly? And although life will be predictably unpredictable. Let's get you to that wedding. A curveball is that much more satisfying. I got the flowers! When you knock it out of the park. Oh my gosh, awesome. So when the plan goes out the window and improvisation becomes the order of the day, just remember, that's where the best of memories are made. All right, they're ready for us. True story.
Ingalls, all the ingredients for University Game captains for this afternoon's ball game for the Lions, number two, Craig Rucker, number nine, Carl Robert Joe, number 52, Nigel Bowden, and number 65, Michael Foster. Game captains for the Pioneers, number 18, Deshaun Davis, number 45, Josh Forrest, number 60, Bailey Herring, and number 95, Ashley Once again, the voice of the Pioneers, Brian Staten. It's a sunny but cool Saturday afternoon in the final home game of 2019 for the Tusculum Pioneers. 27 seniors being recognized here before the uh, kickoff of Tusculum and Mars Hill in the 36th renewal of the Battle of Sam's Gap for the Mountain Border War. Hello, everyone. Brian State to be joined by Joe Bird. Welcome back in to the broadcast booth as the Pioneer offense came to life last week with 32 unanswered points and 478 yards. They've won three consecutive, but their challenge will be very tall today as Craig Rucker and company entertain the Pioneers here from Pioneer Field, Tusculum and Mars Hill for the 36th time. Craig Rucker is the consensus All-American last year and the record breaker in receiving in receptions for a career in the conference and at Mars Hill. Also, is he is closing in on yardage gain, 1,116 yards receiving this season for Craig Rucker, leading the nation. They do have a plenty of offensive weapons. They've got a great running game, but Craig Rucker is the focal point. So the Pioneer focal point will be on defense as well. The question mark will be, will Jackson Cawthon be able to go with a bit of a banged up shoulder? Ivan Hogan's second on the team with 58 tackles this year. Tusculum and Mars Hill get set for the 36th renewal. Tusculum has won two straight in the series. Can they make it three today? It would be their fourth win in a row as well this year. We thank our sponsors and we're back with kickoff. It's Tusculum and Mars Hill on the Pioneer Sports Network. Family. Food's here! What's it mean to you? To us, it means the people you care about, look out for, and yeah, love. Even if you'd never let them hear you say it. Hey, you're eating hummus? What's wrong with hummus? Here at Ingalls, we have everything you need to gather around the table and give each other a hard time. Because that's what families do. Ingalls. All the ingredients for family. Pioneer football kicks off. Back here in the broadcast booth, Tusculum and Mars Hill today from Pioneer Field. Brian Staten and Joe Bird. Joe, as always, a wonderful opportunity. Senior day here today for 27 seniors. Jerry Odom's first class is going to be pretty emotional today. It really is. I mean, emotional. The senior day, last home game of the year. The Pioneers have won three straight. They're looking to make it four straight. It's, it's Mars Hill. 
it's a beautiful day, kind of cool, uh, slight wind blowing, but overall, everybody should be pumped up to play this game. All right, so for the Pioneers, it'll be Andrzejewski. As the Pioneers do win the toss, they defer to the second half. So the Pioneers will be kicking away to start this game, and back deep is the very dangerous Craig Rucker. He is the short back. Tyler Ferguson is the deep back in the return. And Juski runs up foot to leather. It's game on here from Pioneer Field. It'll be Ferguson who will field it at the 11-yard line. Right up the middle, gets away from McIntyre at the 20 to the 25 and up near the 30-yard line before he'll be taken down at that point. And a good special teams tackle for the Pioneers made by Trey Trawick, the freshman out of Milledgeville, Georgia. It's first and 10 for Mars Hill and our first chance to see Jimmy Urzua the uh, wonderful sophomore quarterback stands at six foot four, and his favorite target is Craig Rucker of the Mars Hill Lions. You know, just a, a solid young man coming in here, uh, wanting to get things going here. At 111 completions out of 200 attempts this year, eight interceptions, but 16 touchdowns for the Lions. Urzua will start in the shotgun. It'll be Rucker who will go in motion. D. Alford will follow him. And today for D, this first pass by Urzua is incomplete. Joe, in honor of D today, we're going to call him what he prefers to be called. It's Alfred. Alfred is what Mama prefers to be called. So on his senior day, we'll call him Alfred today. Uh, you know, we'll call him Darth Vader if that's what he wants, as long as he comes in here and plays well today. It will be a different bit of a defensive package, and there is a bit of good news as well. Jackson Coffin is in the starting defensive lineup for the Pioneers. Alfred will follow Craig Rucker wherever he may go today. Chris Roberts, the running back, will get the handoff, and the Pioneers do not let him get maybe just a yard, as there's P.J. Green, one of those 27 seniors, along with Ivan Hogan's for the Pioneers. So to bring up a third down, about nine for the Lions. Tusculum read that play very well and just kind of blew it up from the start. Second effort did get the Lions a couple yards, but still third down and long for Marshall. So for the Lions... Third down and nine. The Pioneers allow just teams to convert 31% of the time this year. This will be Roberts. He's going to fumble the football. Urzua has to go back and fall on top of it back near the 20-yard line. So the mesh point exchange, quarterback to running back, is on the ground. The Pioneers unable to fall on top of it, but they do force a three and out. They have a big start here for the Pioneer defense, picking up where they've left off last week and then as well as they've played the last couple of weeks get the football early and now let's make something out of it so a pioneer football team that will have it a first down or pardon me will get a special teams punt first by the mars hill lions and again the punting team not the greatest these two teams that they have and on to uh, punt the ball away it's a line drive for alford who fields it on the run at the 45 at the 50 lowers his shoulder and takes it to mars hill's 45 yard line as the punt away by Tanner Fox, the junior out of Canton, North Carolina. Talked a little bit about their punting at numbers this year. Just 32.7 yards of punt, a net of 29. First and 10 for the Pioneers, though, from the Mars Hill 46. Yeah, whenever you can start your uh, first offensive scrimmage at any other team's half of the field, that may, makes a good opportunity for you to put points on the board first. It'll be Joaquin Colazzo who will get the start today for the Pioneers. Bryce Moore had uh, been able to pick up seven consecutive starts. Colazzo, who started the Delta State contest, will have Thurlow Wilkins starting as Jordan Shippey unavailable today. We'll talk more about that through the broadcast. First handoff is to Thurlow Wilkins, and Wilkins will get inside the 45 and take it down to about the 44, maybe almost the 43-yard line before he is stood up and gang tackled by Mars Hill. Wilkins, 44 carries so far this season. Most of those coming in the last couple games, but he just he does such a good job, 6.9 yards per average. Didn't get it on the first try or first play, but maybe the next. 153 yards last week, and again, that's it. Two yards here, maybe four yards here, but then he'll explode for a double-digit run as well. Under center will come Colazzo for the Pioneer second down and eight play. A.J. Bellinger a little closer to the line of scrimmage. Turn around, hand it off to Wilkins once again. Has a great lead blocker. He'll try to run over one would-be tackler. He'll take it down to the 41-yard line from his secondary position. Cameron Rice out of Greenville, South Carolina, makes the stop. But another three yards on the play. It'll bring up third down and five for the Pioneers. Yeah, three yards on the play, but still work to do. Pioneers might have to look to the air on this one to try to get this first down and not let this opportunity go to waste. Mars Hill's leading tackler this year is Dexter Fitzpatrick. He stands right in the middle of that defense. They've always got a guy that is so physical in the middle of that defense. 67 tackles, six of them for loss this season for Fitzpatrick. In on that last stop, or on that very first stop of the play, 
as Maurice Gamillion will come in on third down and five. Bunch package to the far side. Colazzo to pass. He looks to the far side to Bellinger. Throws it a little bit behind him, but that's just A.J. Bellinger. All-conference type receiver. Makes the catch inside the 35, down to the 33. First and ten Pioneers. Great job by Bellinger there. He, he did have to break off his route, come back to get the football, and he was hit immediately. He's actually in the air when he got hit. He managed to hold on to it and get the first down for Tusculum. No score. We're just underway here from Pioneer Field. Tusculum forces a three and out and gets the ball at the Mars Hill 46 after the Alfred return to the 46-yard line. It will be that first down and 10 with three wideouts in the formation. Maurice Gamillion is to the right shoulder of the left-hander, Joaquin Colazzo. Mangle the tight end to the right. This will be Torrey Ponder on a jet sweep. 30, 25, Ponder 20 and forced out of bounds inside the 20 at about the 19-yard line. Had to be forced out of bounds by Mikhail Forney, the sophomore out of Richburg, South Carolina, but it's a first and 10 Pioneers. Excellent execution there by the Pioneers on that jet sweep. I mean, it was just set up to Ponder very well, and he also had some pretty good downfield blocking by Carter Mangle. Be a pass completion from Colazzo as well as Ponder. Got to get him involved, Bellinger involved, back-to-back -back plays. The two top receivers have been involved. Wilkins is back in. This has been the bugaboo, if you will, for the Pioneers. The red zone. They get into the red zone this season. They're only scoring a touchdown 39% of the time, and they've turned it over inside the five on three occasions this year. This will be Thurlow Wilkins. He'll break a tackle at the 15. He'll break a tackle at the 10. He'll break a tackle inside the 10 to the 8-yard line. It'll be first and goal for the Pioneers as Thurlow Wilkins showing his power as he gets a big first down carry. Well, there we go. You just said earlier he, he might run for 2 yards and 2 yards with him break for double digits, and that's exactly what he did. So Wilkins gives the Pioneers good field position inside the 10. Actually, they're down to about the 7-yard line as the Pioneers have it first and goal from there. Hunley will line up as a tight end to the right side. Mangle and Boney on the line on the left side. Thurlow Wilkins, the big bruising back, stays in. And now they'll adjust the offensive line, bring Boney back in as the fullback. Turn around and hand it off to Wilkins. He'll run to the left. He'll get the five. He'll lunge for the two and be downed at the one. It'll be second and goal from there. And Joe, we've seen it too many times this year. The Pioneers have it at the two or the one, and they're unable to get into the end zone. They have to score today. Oh, absolutely. You, you're, uh, you're running out of opportunities here in the season to make sure that your offense is clicking, and they need that to do well today. The big thing is whenever you get closer, I saw Thurlow Wilkins stretching for the goal line. I'm like, yeah, don't turn it over. They'll go a triple stack eye with Hunley, the fullback, Boney behind him, and Wilkins behind him. Now move Hunley in motion out of the fullback position. Hand it off to Wilkins, and he'll be swarmed. I think they understood what was coming, they being Mars Hill. They run blitzed, and they lose two, so it's third and goal from the four-yard line. Yeah, that's exactly what I was getting ready to say there. Maybe not telegraph so much and be so predictable when you get down there to let the opposing defense just sniff it out. All right, here's my issue with it. These series, these two games, Tusculum and Mars Hill, this, this, this game, these opponents, usually comes down to the last possession. When you're inside the five at the two, you must get into the end zone because field goals – traditionally have not helped a whole lot. Just been a very good evenly matched series. Colazzo out of the gun on third and goal, looking for Bellinger, leaping, can't bring it in. One-handed attempt by Bellinger. He was pretty well covered on that far sideline in the corner of the end zone by Trey Giles, and it'll be fourth and goal from the four, and on comes the field goal unit. That is a great job by uh, Bellinger to try to get that football. He, he went up one-handed. It had a hand on it, and I thought he was going to pull it in, but unfortunately, as you say, Pioneers are going to have to settle for an attempt for three. I think Colazzo in that time, he was a timing route. He threw it before Bellinger turned around, so the timing was there. However, I'd like to see that back more toward the back shoulder to give Bellinger a better chance. So the attempt from 21 yards, and it'll be Eli Shepard. The kick is up, and the kick is good. And the Pioneers score on the first drive. So we have 8.58 to play here in this opening quarter. Back to a Pioneer field from this break after this. It's Tusculum 3, Mars Hill 0. Hello, my name is Jacob Faith, and I'm the Dean of the College of Business at Tusculum University. I'm proud to share with you that the programs in the College of Business received accreditation through ACBSP in December of 2018. The Accreditation Council for Business Schools and Programs accredits business schools and programs worldwide. This accreditation elevates our programs to the top programs worldwide. So much of life these days is rushing around from one place to another. 
Sometimes you just want to enjoy the journey on the way to the destination. And part of what makes it a little more enjoyable is an appreciation for the folks who help you get there. At Ingalls, we know that the people who send you on your way are the same ones who keep you coming back. I think you should take it for a spin. Are you serious? <laughs> Ingalls, all the ingredients for family. Nine plays, 42 yards, 433 off of the clock. The Tusculum Pioneers, Eli Shepard, good from 21 yards, and Tusculum leads it 3 to nothing here from Pioneer Field. Uh, uh, Jim and I brought it up in our keys to the game. Red zone appearances need to end in uh, extra point kicks, not three-point kicks, but uh, the Pioneers do get the lead. Three points obviously can go a long way in this game. Yeah, it really can, and uh, I'd whole lot rather be leading 3 nothing than trailing before you get a chance to get the football, so... Just start, let your defense come and do another good job and get the ball back. Uh, just think about, you know, the Pioneers over the last few games. You know, they trailed against uh, teams like Wise. They trailed against Catawba. And they've been able to, to win, but they've made it a lot more difficult on themselves. So today, the Tusculum Pioneers. I'm for easy wins today. Yeah. <laughs> That's yes, easy. And Juski set to kick it away after the extended timeout for the uh, Pioneers. Ferguson stands deep with Rucker. And Juski foot to leather, and it will be Craig Rucker who will come up and field this one at the 20. Rucker, far side return is going to be taken down shy of the 30-yard line. That's Ryan McIntyre made just a phenomenal tackle, and the Pioneers forced the Mars Hill Lions to start inside the 30. I mean, that was kind of a flying shoulder grab tackle, just excellent highlight reel type play there for the Pioneers. McIntyre, the sophomore from Chipley, Florida. Spent his summer here at Tusculum this year. Had a chance to see Ryan quite often this year at Lowe's. <laughs> so Mars Hill will come out for their second offensive series. Their first drive, three and out, minus six, after the fumbled exchange between Urzua and Roberts. New running back into the contest as Urzua is back to pass. Looking across the middle, it has it complete. And this will be their big tall receiver as Gilbert Johnson, the junior out of Miami, makes the catch across the 30 up to the 34. And Ivan Hogan's there for the stop. Solid play there from Mars Hill. You just had the good connection. You got somebody in wide open space. And they were able to pick up six yards. Elijah Jett is in the backfield with Urzua. Jett, who has... Been a phenomenal running back for Mars Hill during his career, leading them in rushing this year. Urzua looking left, throwing left, and the pass is across the middle, complete at the 50. Broken coverage for the Pioneers, taking it all the way down to the 24-yard line will be Ferguson as DJ will have to come up with that stop. They'll say the 34-yard line, first and 10 for the Lions. Bit of a breakdown there for the Pioneer secondary to allow a wide receiver to get into that position, but give Urzua credit because he was under heavy pressure and he just delivered a strike and brought before taking a big hit. An odd release for Urzua, but a big-time pass completion. After the Johnson reception of six yards, they get into Pioneer territory to the 34. Urzua on first and 10, hands it off to Elijah Jett. There's just not much running room there as Ivan Hogan's closes that down in a hurry. Once again, no gain. Bring up second down and 10 after the 32-yard reception from Urzua to Ferguson. Well, the big plays that Mars Hill have had on, on this drive, and, of course, they didn't have any real big plays the, their first drive, but the past plays of what they've been feeding on, Pioneers are doing such a good job shutting them down on the line of scrimmage. Second down and 10. Tuskegee leading 3 to nothing, scoring on their first drive. Nine plays, settling for a 21-yard field goal after getting down to the two-yard line on second and goal. So Urzua on second down and 10 to Ferguson running free once again but he can't bring it in with one hand it's incomplete at the Pioneer 15 yard line Cawthon is covering him in coverage so they the Marcel Lion offense is looking and they're finding a matchup they like uh, they really are and then the only reason that that wasn't uh, a touchdown is just because he couldn't get the ball in with one hand because it was just totally wide open for the Lions Urzua completing 55 percent of his passes 16 touchdowns eight picks this season and hasn't been the full Full year full time starter. Third down and 10 for the Lions. Pioneers need to get off the field here. Urzua pass is going to be complete at the 31 yard line, but well shy of the first down. Complete to Ferguson with David Johnson covering, and it will be fourth down for the Lions. And likely in that area that they will go for it because their kicker hasn't been necessarily consistent 
from over 40 yards. Yeah, it doesn't even seem that Marsh Hill's considering the field goal offense is staying on the field with Urzula looking over to get a play. And they go for it so often. 18 of 34 this year for Mars Hill on fourth down. 53% when you compare that to the Pioneers, 7 of 18 on fourth down. Urzua with the snap. Blitz comes. It's picked up. Pass across the middle is incomplete as D. Alford with the coverage on Ferguson. That time not matched up with Rucker. Makes the big stop and the Pioneers turn away the Lions. Great job there by uh, Alford to read that play. And it was as much a shoving, pulling match. Him trying to intercept the football yeah. as it was just a break up. But the net result's the same. The Pioneers have the football back and they're on the 31-yard line. It's a bang-bang play for the Pioneers as well. Got there right when the ball arrived. Knocking it away from Ferguson. So first and 10 for the Pioneers from the 31. Bellinger lines up to the far side. Chavis Williams to the near side with Jake Moss. And the Pioneers Thurlow Wilkins in the backfield behind Colazzo, who will adjust the formation. Mangle will line up in the slot to the far side with Moss. And now Wilkins to the left shoulder of Colazzo. Out of the gun, the handoff. This is going to be Wilkins. And he's looking for a little daylight. Found just a little slither, maybe, as he might gain a half yard on the play. Good pressure on that defensive front by the Mars Hill Lions to force second down and nine. It's kind of funny, the thing that popped into my mind about Wilkins' run. He had nowhere to go. He was just completely matched in. And imagine someone in a dark room trying to feel for the door yeah. to, to get out. That's what he looked like as, with the way he was feeling with his hand. Again, just tried to get acclimated with the offense. Wilkins has taken a little while to be back there as the feature back. But in today for the injured Jordan Shippey, who will not play today. It'll be Ponder who will come with the jet sweep toss. It will be Ponder turning the corner at the 30 and a penalty flag well behind the play. And this likely to come against the Pioneers as he turned to daylight. He got a little, when he got that daylight, it opened up big time because I think of an infraction against the Pioneers. Yeah, it's going to wind up being holding against Tusculum. So back him up uh, 10 yards and replay second down. Again, Jordan Shippey not playing today. Was banged up last week after that touchdown saving tackle he made in the first half after the fumble. As we get our first penalty from Max Melton today, who had the D2 game of the week last week, LR and Wingate. And it'll be a hold against the Pioneers to back him up 10 yards back to the 22. Lenore Ryan setting itself up for a South Atlantic Conference Championship, uh, remaining unbeaten, 9-0 and overall, 7-0 and in the South Atlantic Conference. And they're out of conference action this week. Yeah, against Pembroke today. And then they have these Mars Hill Lions next week to close out the conference year. Shippy not playing today, 83 yards shy of eclipsing 2,000 for his career. If he is able to go next week against Carson Newman, if he gets the 83 yards, then he would become only the fifth player in school history to go for 2,000 yards in a career. That's what Jordan Shippy has meant to this team. Second down, 19 at the 22 for the Pioneers. Under center will come Colazzo. Thurlow Wilkins lines up behind him. It'll be Wilkins, and he'll run it to the left side, and he'll be taken down about the 25. So a gain of about three as Keon Cesar, the junior out of Charlotte, North Carolina, on the stop. So third down, 16 for the Pioneers. Yeah, not really the play the Pioneers were looking for there. Whenever you're backed up second down and 20, to just pick up a short gain on the ground rather than look through the air. That was a little bit... Uh, tough to watch. It's been difficult for the Pioneers passing. Last week picked off a couple of times in that contest. Four turnovers, three picks in the game last week for Tusculum. Five minutes to play here in this opening quarter. Tusculum leads three to nothing. Colazzo to pass and he's going to be sacked. Just coming around the end and getting right to Colazzo was the defensive end Tyson Daniels also playing outside linebacker Daniels the junior from Orlando will force the Pioneers to punt well, Cantrell's going to really have to have a big booming punt here if the Pioneers are going to flip the field Trying to, Pioneers did look to pass but unfortunately the coverage broke down and they wound up getting the quarterback sack so you hold your breath as Jarlett will set to snap it away to Cantrell, who on the year averaging 32.3 yards a punt. Snap is back. Mars Hill does not come after it. The rugby style end over end back to the most dangerous punt returner in the league. And that's Craig Runker. We'll have to just watch it do nothing. And then actually a little shoving. Pioneers do touch it up at about the 35-yard line. 
as Josh Forrest was just trucked from behind and is still wondering what in the world happened. No flag was thrown, but Rucker had no chance to return it either. First and 10, Mars Hill. No, uh, you can't really call it a flipping of the field, but at least he did get uh, a decent punt away that rugby style helped on here because it made it unreturnable and got a good bounce and roll. So Elijah Jett will be the running back for Jimmy Urzua for the quarterback of Mars Hill, who led the Lions down deep into Pioneer territory but stopped at the Pioneer 31 as they could not convert on fourth down. Urzua, 3 of 6, 41 yards. A 32-yard reception to Ferguson. Rucker will go in motion. They'll hand it off to him on the jet sweep, and he's hemmed in. Ivan Hogan's just does not let him go anywhere. He and D. Alfred, and glad to have Malik Goodman with the presence from that free safety position. It's a loss of a yard, second down and 11. You know, anytime your uh, your offense backs the other team up on first down, that sets up a good opportunity for you to get the football back. So the Pioneers lead 3 to nothing. 3.45 left here in this opening quarter of play from Pioneer Field. Final home game of the year. Our final, well, it's the end of the three-game homestand for the Pioneers. Mars Hill looking for something. They'll bring in a fullback this time and play action pass. Urzua to pass, looking across the middle, and it's going to be caught, I think, by Ferguson. Did a great job in front of Ty Corey and Brown as he catches it right at midfield, which would move the chains on a pickup of 16. The flag down, I think, by the pass interference against the Pioneers to be declined. Yeah, Brown is arguing with the official saying that the football hit the ground, but he's failed to realize he's been called for pass interference, so it doesn't really matter. I'm not sure if the officials ruled it a catch, as Max will give us the indication. It will be pass interference against the Pioneers. Actually, they're going to say it was a completed pass and a good catch by Ferguson nonetheless. Ferguson is the team's second leading receiver, 29 catches, 334 yards. Already two catches in this game, though. And now closing in on 50 already in the first quarter, 50 yards, that is. Urzua is out of the gun. Jet is on his right shoulder. And they'll hand it off to Elijah Jet. And Jet looking for running room. And Ivan Hogan, who has already had a monster game, says, no, sir. It's a gain of maybe a half yard. It'll bring up second and long. Brian, a couple other games in South Atlantic Conference already kicked off uh, in the third quarter at Wise, Virginia. Catawba leads UVA Wise 14 to 7. And at Limestone in Gaffney, South Carolina, at the end of the first, Carson Newman is up 21 nothing over the Limestone Saints. Wise led that game early, seven to nothing. So Kataba with 14 unanswered there. Limestone has played much better since their 38-10 drubbing by the Pioneers early in the year, but the Eagles in command. Play action passes, Urzua looking, looking, and he's got a man back there, but it's Alfred steps in front of the pass and picks it off at the 17, 30. Alfred at the 40, Alfred at the 45 to the 50, convoy of blockers at the 40, Alfred at the 35, and he's tracked down from behind by the intended target, Gilbert Johnson, and D. Alfred with the big-time pick for the Pioneers and a penalty flag in at the end of the play. Well, I said we'd call him Darth Vader if he had a big play today, and that was certainly uh, Imperial Darth Vader on that play for D. Alfred. Alfred was actually back in as a safety in that nickel package for Jerry Odom and was not shadowing at that of Craig Recker and came off of Gilbert Johnson for that pick, his eighth career interception. And at the end of the play, we got an illegal block below the waist on Mars Hill to add 15 yards. Alfred fourth on the team with 38 tackles this year. Tied for the team lead now with now with the team lead. 13 passes defended and now four interceptions, 10 breakups. He's into the top five in the career record books in uh, interceptions. And this will move the Pioneers inside the red zone to the Mars Hill 14 after the penalty. Yeah, they get to wound up getting half the distance to the goal because where it was uh, located. But as you say, the Pioneers do have the ball first and 10 at the line, 14. Huge return by Alford, and that will move him into the top two in interception return yards for a career behind that of only one other guy that you should even know, Ricardo Coakley. Hand off there, Low Wilkins stops, and he may have lost the football. I think Mars Hill has picked it up. Mars Hill says they have it, as Wilkins will cough it up, and the Lions recover it at the 13. Another red zone trip that comes up empty for the Pioneers. Yeah, that's something that, uh, whether it can hopefully be fixed today, next week, offseason, certainly that's something that the Pioneers can't continue to let happen. That's just unbelievable. 
how many times that the Pioneers oh, turn the ball over or yeah. fail to get into the end zone when they get into the red zone. Oh, I mean, there's some sort of little stutter step there by Thurlow Wilkins. He started to go, and I don't know if he tried to cut or what, but it's almost like he lost his balance, and then as he was pushing back forward, that's when he got hit and lost control of the football. Back-to-back games with back-to-back turnovers. Last week, the Pioneers get a pick. Pioneers return the favor on the very next play. This year, or this game, the Pioneers get a pick and turn it over on the fumble on the very next play. This will be Urzua, a little play-action pass, looking out for Craig Rucker in front of Alfred this time. Makes the catch just shy of the 20 at the 19. It'll gain five, and it'll bring up second down and five. And just a note on Craig Rucker, with all the numbers and all the accolades that he has earned, he did not earn All-American last year against Tuscaloosa. Five catches, 34 yards last year, as the defense did a pretty good job hemming him up. Now, that was obviously a year ago, and this is today. Well, the defense is going to have to do a good job of uh, hemming up Mars Hill's passing game the rest of the day. They've done so a great job so far on the running game, but the passing game is where they need a little better work defensively. Urzua out of the gun. This time, pull, pin and pull. He'll pull it and look for Craig Rucker complete. This time at the 25, maybe the 26. It should move the chains for a first down, but there is a flag in the secondary. This could be a pick going against Mars Hill just to free up Craig Rucker. And again, a big penalty against Mars Hill. Gave the Pioneers the ball at the 14, but then they fumbled it after that interception. And this was, I think, blocking downfield or a a a rub that professional, what do you call that, uh, screen in a way that's very illegal, just trying to give Craig Rucker any type of daylight possible. Well, still no indication from the officials exactly what the call is going to be. They're going to mark it off from the line of scrimmage, which would be the 19, and back up Mars Hill. It will be offensive pass interference against Mars Hill. That'll move the ball back inside the 10 to the 9. The Lions will get to replay second down, but going to be backed up very far with a lot of work to do. So Mars Hill about second down and 15 now instead of... Third down and short. Third down and, well, actually, I think it would have been a first down where they had it marked. It was near the line to gain. I think he stepped out near the 25-yard line, which should have been a first down, but negate that on the penalty. Two of the most penalized teams in the league, Pioneers the most by yardage, and Mars Hill ranking sixth in penalty yards a game. Urzua is out of the gun. Elijah Jett back there with it. Back to pass. Urzua going downfield and just well overthrown and out of play. He was running out of time as he was under a lot of pressure in that backfield from Jackson Cawthon, and it forces third down and 15. Cawthon did just a heck of a job there to blow through and put the pressure on the quarterback and cause him to have to heave it away in a hurry. Jackson last year was the Tusculum Freshman of the Year Academic Award winner and the D2 ADA Honor Roll honoree. Jackson Cawthon... Great football player and a smart mind as well, understands the game. His dad, the defensive coordinator at the University of Houston. Urzua on third and 15. Pass across the middle, complete to Craig Rucker at the 20, and he will have the 23-yard line. Actually, they've given him forward progress to the 25-yard line. He ever sniffed the 25-yard line, but he makes the catch for the first down. Well, that's just that's a terrible breakdown on the passing game. You could have had Marshall punting out of its own end zone, and you give up just the number of yards that you have to the 15 or so to get the first down and give Mars Hill a new life. Something has infuriated Ivan Hogan's, and I would be infuriated with the spot. That's a horrible spot. First down and 10 for the Mars Hill Lions. This time, Urzua, pin and pull. Pass across the middle is going to be complete to Ferguson. Right as he catches it, he's taken down at the 32-yard line as the Pioneers bring him down. Malik Goodman or Nick Jackson was running it. Thought Nick was going to actually make the interception as he got there before the ball, but brings down Ferguson after a gain of nine. Well, Mars Hill's uh, figured out, hey, we can pass on this team, so forget this whole running thing and let's just pass our way down the field. That play will be the final play of the first quarter. The Pioneers have been in the red zone twice. They have three points to show for it. At the end of one quarter, it's Tusculum 3, it's Mars Hill 0. Pioneer football will continue after this from Pioneer Field on the Pioneer Sports Network. We are in French County, Tennessee, here at Pierce Farms, and uh, the Pierce family has been working with Ingalls for over 30 years. It means a great deal supplying uh, produce, as a local farmer, uh, it really touches base knowing that we're just simple people just trying to help and we love what we do and Ingalls is a huge part of helping us do it. Farming is who we are and it's in our blood. 
God has really blessed us with the sun and the soil to grow the best tomatoes you'll find anywhere. <laughs> I believe it's really in the soil. So if you're in Granger County and you farm tomatoes, then you're, you're in. <laughs> Just a great blessing on us to actually farm and be able to farm and to supply tomatoes to people. And Ingalls really cares about family farms like Pierce Farms, and they really care about their customers. We're just glad to be a part of that. God has blessed us with a really great partnership there. They make fresh local produce have real meaning for lots of people. I'm Shane Pierce, and this is my Ingle story. Back at Pioneer Field for Military First Responders Appreciation Day, Senior Day, and the Tusculum Pioneers leading the game by a score of three to nothing here from uh, Pioneer Field. Tusculum in that first half, 115 yards to Mars Hill's 80. Mars Hill's run for minus six, and the Pioneers for 92 yards in that first half. Mars Hill's thrown for 86, and the Pioneers for 23. Thurlow Wilkins. I believe they're going to have to uh, fix that because I don't think he's run eight times for 95 yards. Uh, no. no. So I think that'll have to be adjusted in the uh, in the game. Second down and a yard as we start the uh, second quarter, so maybe not as many yards as we think. So we'll see how that could be adjusted. It'll be Urzua with the blitz on second down and a, a yard, and Craig Rucker had just a step on Alfred that time, but the pass letting too much incomplete. It's third down and about a yard for the Mars Hill Lions. We talked about Ivan Hogan's being upset there earlier. And, uh, something must have happened that he feels like he was choked, scratched, or something, because he was talking to the umpire and referee Max Melton while they were waiting to start to play, yep. and he was holding his head back and pointing toward his neck like, hey, they, they're choking me in here. Already three tackles for the team's second leading tackler this year and the all-region honoree. Third down and a yard for Jimmy Urzua and the Mars Hill Lions and give it to Elijah Jett. He has the first down and really the first positive gain on running the ball for the Mars Hill Lions up to the 37-yard line. First and 10, Mars Hill. And that still has them at negative yards rushing a that's about a three- or four-yard pickup. They were minus six, so they're still minus yards on the ground. Well, awful trends that have continued in this game that is driving Jerry Odom crazy. That's not getting touchdowns in the red zone, especially when you're inside the five, and at not getting off the field on third down and long as the Pioneers did not on this drive. This drive continues, and this pass is going to be threaded, threading the needle as Urzua somehow finding Ferguson up to the 38-yard line. He catches it on his backside with three Pioneers around him, and it's second down and, and four coming up for the Lions. That's a positive play for the Lions. You just, even though you're not picking up some big dramatic flashy uh, pass down the field, if you can thread through, pick up five or six yards at a time, it takes you in the same place. Harbison and Ferguson to the near side with Craig Rucker. Johnson lines up to the far side. Elijah Jett is the running back as Urzua in the uh, shotgun formation with the snap and the handoff to Elijah Jett gets away from the line of scrimmage and then is tracked down by Nick Jackson at the line to gain, which should move the chains another first and ten for the Mars Hill Lions on the pickup of four. You know, Elijah Jett listed as uh, five foot eight, two hundred pounds. That's a lot of power in a small package, and that's why he's able to break through the way he does. And once he gets going, it's tough to tackle. Pioneers are leading the game three to nothing. Not getting off to great starts in contest, being outscored 75-49 in the first quarter this season, but uh, nothing for Marcel. Blitz is coming. It's picked up, and the pass downfield. D. Alford knocking it away from Craig Rucker. Good defense by D. Alford as Rucker was just behind him. Alford turns at the right time and knocks it away. Incomplete. Second down and 10. Well, I don't know uh, that D. really knew what he was doing whenever he batted that away, but either way, the result's the same. He he was looking at the receiver the whole way, and at the last minute, stuck a hand up and bounced the ball free. Takes one play as Craig Rucker this year, along of 75 in the receiving category, 13 touchdowns. He's averaging 14 yards of reception this year for the Mars Hill Lions and just the fantastic wideout, great for his career, always a threat. Chris Roberts will be in at running back out of Aiken, South Carolina on second down and 10. They'll run a little screen pass complete to him. He'll be hit by David Johnson at the 48. He'll move up to the 49. Johnson comes off his block from Harbison and makes the stop after a gain of only a yard. It brings up third down and nine. Man will pick up big hit there by David Johnson to 
help get the Pioneers in, in position. Boy, DJ has played well. Didn't think he would be able to play after that Newberry game. But Johnson has come in, career 82 tackles for him in his career. And he came in today sharing the team lead and passes defended. Alfred's had a couple of more in this game. So third down and nine. Pioneer defense needs to get off the field here as Urzua back to pass with some pressure coming on him. And it's a pass across the middle complete to Harvison at the 45, 40, 35, and down to the 33 before Malik Goodman can bring him down. It'll move the chains. Another big third and long pickup. And there is another penalty flag thrown after the play. And I believe that Ivan Hogan is going to win his case this time. Uh, you know, be interesting to see because I know some of the Pioneers were coming up out of that pile highly upset because of uh, – some blocking by Mars Hill. So it's going to go on Ferguson, it would appear, and involved with Ivan Hogan's, I think, at the end of the play. And Hogan's is walking over toward the sidelines. And this could be offsetting. Oh, actually, the Pioneers are pointing Mars Hill's way. But Mars Hill is clapping, so <laughs> let's just wait to see. Well, the word is out. call an unsportsmanlike penalty on Ferguson, which is going to be his first after the play. That's going to move the ball back to the 47. So it's a dead ball penalty, and I don't know. I think it's going to be first and 10 for the Lions back at near midfield. Well, we had two replays, but both cut away before whatever happened happened, so I can't tell you. Well, word is out on Hogan's that, you know, he's a an emotional player. And if you can get into his head, maybe you can earn a few 15-yarders. But, man, he's such a talent, too. Well, into the game will come C.J. Thompson in for Ferguson, who's out of the game right now for Mars Hill. And then another penalty on the Lions on that offensive line as they moved a bit early. It comes from the left tackle position. And Travis James, the senior from Gastonia, moved early. Field position, uh, thanks to the penalties, is benefiting the Pioneers. But that doesn't absolve the fact that they did give up third down and long. Mars Hill's yeah. actually farther back, yeah. but backing up more than they're going forward, but they did get a fresh set of downs because Tuscan couldn't get off the field on third down. So first down and 15 from the Pioneer, 48 now. And Urzua out of the gun to pass. This pass is complete to the far sideline to the back out of the, uh, out of the backfield, 50, 45, and down there is... David Johnson to bring him down as Chris Roberts makes the catch to the Pioneer 44-yard line. That would have been a good opportunity for the Pioneers, but they didn't have anybody there because it was a poorly th thrown football, but Mars Hill made the play. So Urzua to pass once again, and this time he's looking to go downfield, and penalty flags thrown as it's actually Rucker, who apparently was holding D. Alford that time and extending and yelling at the officials to throw the flag, and he wins his case. Pass was incomplete, well overthrown. And this can't be pass interference because I don't care how fast Craig Rucker is, he was never going to catch that ball. And, you know, also matter of fact that uh, Urzua should have been sacked, but there's some holding back behind the line of scrimmage. Well, they're not getting the holding there, but they're going to get the holding. No, they're calling pass interference. That's a terrible call because it can't be pass interference if you can't catch the ball to begin with. Penalties just becoming the story of the day for both teams here. I had the over under at 19, and I took the over. <laughs> uh, more scores coming in now. Brian Katabi UVA wise that is tied up at 14 with three 531 left in the third quarter. Carson Newman now leads Limestone 24-7, and I'll give you a couple more here in a minute. 11.34 to play in the first half. 3-0 Tuskegee. Mars Hill on the move. And it'll be a double reverse. And Thompson's going to drop the football. And he's going to go down back at the 35-yard line after fumbling the exchange. As C.J. Thompson in for Ferguson mishandles it, they lose six on the play. Those other scores are basketball. Basketball season has started now. Uh, Tusculum women at King, they lead that game 7-6 early in the first quarter. And early in the first half, Tusculum men leads 9-6 over Clayton State. Trenton Gibson with a huge triple-double last night in their win against Aiken. Uh, they're playing in a tournament up in LMU. Second down and 16, Mars Hill. Tariq Jenkins for 22. Dylan Smith had 21 last night for the men in that 30-point blowout of the Pacers. Third down, or pardon me, second down, 16. Draw play to Roberts, and uh, Forrest will hit him first and then finished off by Solomon Hunter. They call him Solo. I like it. I like it a lot. 
as Solo will finish him off. And on that carry was Chris Roberts after third down, second down and 16, now making third down and 12. Well, Solomon Hunter is Solo. We've got D. Alford calling him Darth, Darth Vader today. Yep. You know, so it, I'm liking I'm liking where your head was at there. Yeah, you know, so, I mean, does that mean that Coach Odom is Yoda? Or you know, <laughs> do, do we have an Obi-Wan Kenobi in there? Yes, we do, actually. Who's Chewbacca? Third down into what we'll call Ferguson Chewbacca, or Luther. Pass looking to the corner, and this is going to be complete. On third down and long for Craig Rucker, and he makes a wonderful over-the-shoulder catch, and the Mars Hill Lions with the lead. Urzua throws a perfect ball. Rucker runs underneath it into the end zone The score, and the Craig Rucker show continues. Yeah, I mean, that's just more situations where... Mars Hill's third down conversion because Tuscan can't get off the field has has cost the Pioneers today. Well, again, a third down and long once again for the uh, Mars Hill Lions. They completed thir three third and longs, a few penalties along the way, and the Lions will take the lead. And on to attempt the uh, point after will be Tanner Fox. Snap, hold, and kick is up and good. And Mars Hill takes the lead. We go to a break, and we're back to Pioneer Field after this. 10.02 to play in the first half. It's Mars Hill 7 and Tusculum 3 as Pioneer football will continue for Military and First Responders Appreciation Day on the Pioneer Sports Network. Further review, Craig Rucker's nowhere near the goal line. He's down at the two. Yeah, I guess I need my mic down. Uh, absolutely. You, you look at the replay there, his knee hit at the two yard line. Well, I was wondering, I, I saw Coach Odom uh, having a discussion with one of the officials, and I didn't know what he was upset about because it was just a good play by Mars Hill. And now we look at the replay and we see. Well, last week they did not allow a Bellinger touchdown which resulted in three points after he was ruled down at the one and after a review he was definitely in this week Craig Rucker's given the touchdown he's down at the two yard line he's not in the end zone so that's that's a tough call going against the Pioneers but it's a 15 play 86 yard drive took 706 off the clock and Rucker's 31 yard touchdown pass nearly equals all the yards he had receiving last year against the Pioneers with 34. I mean, he, he made a, a spectacular diving catch, but his knee hit at the two, and then he slid forward and knocked over the pylon, and that's why he got credit for the touchdown. So 10.02 to play, and Fox will set to kick it away as Thurlow Wilkins is back deep for the Pioneers. And just which direction will Fox kick it? It'll actually be a short kick. It'll be fielded by an up back. That's Maurice Gamillion at the 28. Gamillion at the 30. 35 and tripped up as he goes to the 40-yard line. And that's where the Pioneer offense will take over first and ten. So the Pioneers, the offense has been anemic after that very first drive. See if they can't pick this team up a little bit and keep the defense off the field for a while, too. Well, now you don't have any choice to, but to pick things up because you've gone from even though it was a slight lead, you're trailing this football game seven to three. So you see, they're, you know, it's time to get moving. Pioneers have just 43 yards of offense. They have adjusted the Thurlow Wilkins mishap. Eight carries, 23 yards. Maurice Gamillion will be the running back this go-around with Joaquin Colazzo in at quarterback. He steps back into the gun. Deshaun Davis in the slot to that far side. Colazzo to pass, looking, looking, rolls the pocket. It has Gamillion. He throws it behind him. Incomplete. He's wide open. Well, a lot of that had to do with the pressure from Mars Hill doing a good job and making Colazzo throw the football a little bit before he wanted to. 
Second down and 10 coming up for the Pioneers. Got some guys running open, especially around the line of scrimmage. A Mars Hill defense that maybe doesn't give as much credit as they deserve. They are allowing 34 points a game. They are allowing 170 yards rushing and 218 yards passing. But those numbers are gravely improved over the last three or four years. Second down and 10 for the Pioneers at the 39. Colazzo to pass, complete to Bellinger, and he splits two defenders. Hits to the 45 and up to the 47-yard line before he'll be taken down there, taken down by the linebacker, William Brock. And now a penalty flag just came in. So a pl flag comes in after this play. Again, always going to be a chippy series. I mean, we can go back to the early part of this century and talk about why this series is so chippy. Blue Davis. Khalid Abdullah. Epic showdown. And now Mars Hill gets another unsportsmanlike conduct against Trey Giles. That will be his second. So Ferguson has one. Giles has one. If they get another one, they will be ejected from the game. Hey, at least this isn't like Texas, Oklahoma, and everybody in, it, in uniform got an unsportsmanlike before the thing ever kicked off. Before the game even kicked off was a uh, Now, there were years that that could have happened. Right. Yeah. And the ball will be moved inside the 40 to the 39 of Mars Hill. So the Pioneers have been in the red zone twice. They have three points to show for it. They have a fumble on one. They get down to the two on the first drive of the game for them offensively. And they had to settle for the 21-yard Eli Shepard kick. Now the Pioneers have it. Down 7-3 to three to the Mars Hill Lions here at home. Colazzo will adjust his tight ends. Mangle and Hundley will move to the near side as the handoff will go to Maurice Gamillion, who will do well to get back to the line of scrimmage as Mars Hill's adjusted. London Honeycutt, the freshman out of Mount Pleasant, North Carolina, makes the stop, and it brings up second down and 10. Yeah, they did give him, they did give him the line of scrimmage, maybe just a couple inches more, but either way, the net result is still second down 10 yards to go to get the first. Clock runs under nine minutes to play here in this opening half. Mars Hill leads 7-3 to three on a Craig Rucker 31-yard touchdown reception, which should have been only credited for 29 yards because he went down with his knee at the two. But he did have a stamp on D. Alford, who is blanketing him wherever he goes today. On second down, this will be Colazzo to pass. Steps up in the pocket, looking, 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 now running. 35 Gets a block, and he slides out of bounds around the 34, maybe the 33-yard line is what they'll give him. It'll be third down about four as Colazzo gets six. Pioneers have work to do here. Uh, I'm not real sure whether, if, if they had to go to a field goal here, how Eli Shepard could do on this. Uh, the wind is picking up and blowing. So do what you can to get the first down here and not have to worry about going for three. Tim Clifton, who spends a majority of his time out beyond the numbers during a game, is out saying something to the officials, and I think he wanted some type of a blindside block, which may have had an argument for there. So the Pioneers on third down and four at the 33 must convert here. Just 31% of the time the Pioneers convert on third down this year. And this will be Gamillion gets the first down at the 30, spins at the 25, down to the 21-yard line, and a flag at about the point he broke open to daylight. A flag-happy crew here today at Pioneer Field. So this is probably going to come back for a hole. Should give credit to this Pioneer offensive line, though, despite the flag that's happened here and likely going to come bring it back. But Kevion Broadwater playing his final game. Uh, what a, an all-region performer he has been. Rick Genentomi, the freshman. Bailey Herring, the junior at center. Brandon Harrison, the senior. Christian Culture, the freshman. And move the ball back to the 43 and make it now third and about 14. More scores. Uh, UVA Wise now leads Catawba 21-14. UNC Pembroke is at Lenore Ryan, and that game's tied at seven midway of the first. Carson Newman is still up 24-10 at Limestone. Third down and 14 for Joaquin Colazzo and the Pioneers from the Mars Hill 43-yard line, and another penalty to move the Pioneers back five more yards. Continuing on the scoreboard, Brian. Uh, King leads Tuscan women 16-14 with 2-12 left in the first quarter. Pioneer men are up 14-12 with 11-34 left in the first half. And Tuscan volleyball is at Wingate, and Tuscan is up 16-12 in the first game. Wingate, who has only lost once this year, not only the conference power, the regional power, 
in women's volleyball. And I do know we have Tusculum Cross Countries in action today yep. at the Southeast Regional. Don't know how that went for the Tusculum runners. Third and 19 at the Mars Hill 48-yard line. Mars Hill leading 7-3. to three. And Joaquin Colazzo backs out of the gun, trips to this near side. He's got Bellinger to the far side. Colazzo looking, steps up. Got to throw it sometime. Pass complete to Gamillion for maybe three. That's about it. It'll be fourth down for the Pioneers. So the Pioneers should have been looking at first down, what, right about the 20, 19, 20. I forget exactly where they got. And then they got pulled back for the holding. They got the other penalties, started backing up. And now instead of perhaps scoring inside the red zone, you're going to be punting away. Nine total penalties, five against the Pioneers for 58 yards, four for 40 yards against the Lions, who lead it 7-3. to three. Cantrell in to punt it away. Craig Recker stands at the 10-yard line. Six and a half to play here in this opening half. Good pass this time. And Cantrell's punt is going to go out of bounds inside the 20 at about the 19. Wow. They're going to give it. Uh, we gave him the 20. Yeah. Not exactly what he was looking for. The idea he was looking for, he was trying to drop it over into that little no man's land there. It was just maybe the breeze caught it and carried it over the out of bounds line. So first down and 10 for Mars Hill. They lead the game 7-3. to three. And the last drive, they took 86 yards after 15 plays. And Jimmy Urzua is finding his groove. He's 12 of 19, 151 yards with the touchdown and the D. Alford interception. I'll just look for Mars Hill continue to keep throwing it. That's once they figured out very quickly, hey, we can't run against Tuscan's defense, but we can pick the Pioneers apart. That's exactly what they're doing now. 6.20 on the clock when Urzua takes the snap, and it's a play-action pass. Across the middle, that's going to be complete to Rucker. Rucker at the 40, Rucker at the 50, flag behind the play, 40 of the Pioneers, down to the 30-yard line, a flag all the way back at the 29-yard line, probably to negate a massive play for Craig Rucker. It is going to be a net uh, positive for the Pioneers because they didn't get that play, but Right now, don't be thankful for penalties. Figure out what you can do to make your defense stop this guy. That time, Alfred was not on Craig Rucker. It was Ivan Hogan's trying to uh, gather him across the middle. And I tell you what, this coaching staff for Mars Hill is just finding the right matchups and doing the right things. And uh, getting Craig Rucker the ball right now is key. And if that play had stood, flips the field in a big way. And you talk about Marsh Hill's coaching staff. They've uh, had certainly long enough. This is you know, more than two decades for Coach Clifton. Yeah, 27th year. So first down and 15. Rucker was covered up on the line of scrimmage, and then he became the first player to touch the ball. So... They're trying to hide him and disguise him, but they did so, unfortunately, illegally there for the Mars Hill Lions. Yeah, yeah. Official penalty, illegal touching. There's a penalty for that. There is. Illegal touching. So first and 15 back at the 15-yard line for the Mars Hill Lions. 151 yards in the game for Mars Hill all through the air. None on the ground. Urzua to pass out of the gun under some pressure, and our guys tackled. Throw it across the middle, complete to Gilbert Johnson, who goes down at the 32-yard line and just running free. But it's tough to fight, put pressure on the quarterback when you're getting tackled in the backfield. I think that's illegal touching. That's pretty pretty much it is. But it's first and 10 on a pickup of 18 yards up to the 33-yard line for Marcel, and Urzua continues to impress. Hey, just, he, he is. He's absolutely picking the defense apart. And it's not all big, long downfield passes. He's just throwing right over in the middle and then getting the football to these guys, and they're picking up the yards five and a half left in the first half elijah jet will change the running game numbers as he's going to pick up close to 12 yards get across the 45 up to the 46 yard line and uh, jerry odom that's going to prompt him to uh, talk about this his defense right now being gashed uh, that's i started to say might be a good time for a timeout and i was certainly correct Founded in 1991, pardon me, the Pioneer Club helps our students succeed athletically and academically as its members provide athletic scholarships as well as support for programs and facilities. The Pioneer Club offers several donation levels to meet your budget as well. More importantly, we hope you'll join the Pioneer Club to help support student athletes by giving them the best possible resources to excel on and off the playing service. If you've received a Pioneer Club brochure during this summer, take time to review it, pull it out, um, dust it off, and take a look at it to determine what you can give to support Tusculum University. 
If you'd like to receive a brochure or more information, contact Josh Ely at 423-636-7331. I'm a member of the Pioneer Club, and you should be too. And now you are. And now, and now I've just renewed mine. I thought I had done it earlier this year. That did not happen, apparently. A lot going on. Yeah. So Elijah Jett gives the running game some uh, life. He has 22 yards now on five carries, and that long, his longest of the day, 13 yards. They had had zero to that point. But right now, Mars Hill is just chewing up yardage against the Pioneers, 182 yards here in this first half. Well, right now, the Pioneers are still at 5 minutes, 19 seconds left before halftime. They've uh, they've got to do something to try to get this thing fixed and not keep giving up these big defensive yards. So this drive began at the 20, a penalty after a gain of about 60 yards. Move the ball back inside the 20 to the 15. And then a 13-yard catch. And then a 13-yard run. Well, I mean, right now it's uh, it's time to step up or do something else. Pass downfield for the tight end is going to be incomplete. And a well-thrown ball. You just didn't have a good connection there on the, uh, the route between quarterback and target and Whenever you, doesn't matter how good looking it is through, through the uh, air, if it's not falling where your receiver is, it's not going to do you any good. Great. I got birthday girl Gabrielle Staten back at home. She's got the flu, trying to recover from that. Got another teenager, Joe. It's unbelievable. For all those uh, Greenville Middle School assistant principals and principals, it is not um, Gabriel Statone, it's Gabby. With the birthday. Elijah Jett on second down and 10. He's going to lose maybe a yard, but then Malik Goodman brings him down and Jett fights to get back to the line of scrimmage. So happy birthday to my daughter, her 13th. We'll celebrate a little later today, but has been under the weather for the last two or three days. It's also our buddy Ronnie Wilhoit's birthday. Hey, Ronnie Wilhoit's birthday. Jerry Odom celebrated the big 5-1 on Thursday of this week. So happy birthday to him. And, of course, he just, he just wants a dub. That's yeah. what he said. All I want is a dub. Third down and ten coming up. We could smell the popcorn. Hey, Roxy's and Roxy here. has Tucker provided Harris. the popcorn once again. Appreciate her efforts, as always, here at Tuscal. Third down and ten for Urzua. Pioneers must find a way to get off the field. This pass is going to be incomplete. A lot of hand fighting with Johnson and Hogan's. And Urzua was under some pressure. They wanted a flag there. Might have warranted one, but it's fourth down. Yeah, I think in that situation, both offense and defense was guilty. So the referee smartly just left flags in the pockets and said, you, you both were going after each other, said we can't penalize one or not the other. So Pioneers get a timeout. I'm not sure it changes the entire fortune for the Pioneers, but it does bring on the punt team for Mars Hill. So Tanner Fox is on to punt it away for the second time in the game after their first series went three and out. D. Alford stands back at the 10. Again, Mama likes it to be Alford. D. said, you know, I, I'm okay with Alford, so we'll say Alford. Fox to punt it, and not even looking anywhere near D., but it does take a bounce right to D. Alford, and he'll field it at about the 12. Nice job by D., though. That ball could have gone all the way inside the 10 and probably downed inside the 5. So he does save some field position, but he had no chance at a return there whatsoever. Yeah, the ball was bouncing, rolling very low, and he just more or less kind of did a little scoop job to keep it from going back farther. So the Pioneers have it first and 10 and very little offense to show for anything since the first drive. I can't understand what Max Melton is saying. The wind, you can hear the wind just blowing right through his microphone. Got to have better. We don't. You don't hear that a lot in other stadiums. We always hear it here. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. Of course, it's a mixture of the wind always blowing here, maybe not blowing other places, but I think one of those little wind guards. Running back is Maurice Gamillion for the Pioneers. Runs it right up the middle, runs hard across the 15, up to about the 18-yard line. A running game that's turned out season best in back-to-back -back weeks. 366 last week has been a bit anemic today. That's been my word today. And Earl Adams there on the stop for Mars Hill. Check of the weather shows that uh, we're experiencing 9-mile-an-hour winds here at Pioneer Field today. 
So this Pioneer football team down 7-3 to three here at home. Quickly to the line, handed off to Gamillion once again. He'll cross the 20 and take it up to the 22, which will move the chains in a desperately needed first and 10 to keep the ball for the Pioneer offense and give this defense just a little bit of rest. Well, I mean, right now it's good to get the defense some rest, but it's what I'm liking thinking if we could manage another uh, three-minute drive here and put the ball in the end zone, that would be a really good effort for the Pioneers. Three and a half on the clock. Pioneers do receive the second-half kickoff, and the new quarterback into the contest is Bryce Moore for the Pioneers. So Chameleon... With Moore shouting out instructions, will back up into the gun, and Chameleon will line up on the right shoulder of Moore. Bunch package. Moore looking to pass, now scrambling, throwing as he falls, and the pass is going to be incomplete on first down and 10, looking for Chavis Williams. And Moore actually stumbles as he throws across his body as well. It's incomplete. You know, passing, uh, well, actually, if you want to get real technical, tell Tuscum's whole offense not doing very well today. But the passing game has just not been there for Tuscum. Passing yards today for the Pioneer shows 35 yards, running game 37 yards, and much of that attained on the very first drive of this game when the Pioneers got down to the two but settled for a field goal to make it three to nothing. So Moore working from the gun. Gamillion on his left shoulder this time for the Pioneers, and this pass will be to Bellinger on a little receiver screen complete at the 20. Bellinger will do well to get up to the 26-yard line. As that play has worked the last couple of games for Bellinger, but just unable to break free of the tackle that time made by Dexter Fitzpatrick, their leading tackler, the freshman from LaGrange, Georgia. Well, Marshall had it well read because just about the time Bellinger made contact, got the football and his grasp, we had three line defenders around him to make the tackle. So two and a half on the clock. It runs here in the first half. Pioneers trail seven to three at home. They've won each of the last two games against Mars Hill, but they have usually been decided on the last possession. Odom's only loss against Mars Hill came in overtime. He went for two. This pass complete to Bellinger's. He will have the ball up near the 34-yard line. Well, they did not give him forward progress. They mark him down at the 33, but it should be enough to move the chains, and it will be, I think, a first and 10. They haven't marked it a first down yet, though. Yeah, first and 10, says Max Melton. Yeah, first down for the Pioneers. That's uh, that a good effort. It was a good spot. I think he didn't get the forward momentum, as we have seen some other spots today, but still enough to... Uh, keep the ball in Tuscan's possession with a chance to put some points on the board. 2.15 and counting. The Pioneers have it from their own 33-yard line as Moore will come under center. It continues to be Maurice Gamillion in as the running back as I'm trying to survey this sideline. I don't see Thurlow Wilkins at the moment. Moore to pass. Steps up. Pirouette spin and not exactly sure where he was going or what he was thinking. He had all sorts of room to run and he spins away and is sacked back at the 29-yard line where he'll lose four. Yeah, that was very peculiar. Claza went up stopped, did a spin around. He could have either kept running or not gone in that spot in the first place and actually rolled out to his left and he had wide receivers and a wide open field with either one. 90 seconds to play here in the first half. Bryce Moore comes back to the line of scrimmage, steps back into the gun. Gamillion lines up to his left shoulder this time. Second down and 14 for the Pioneers. Blitz comes. Moore delivers to Ponder, and this is too hot, hot for him to handle incomplete as Moore took a pretty good hit as the blitz untouched to the backfield up for Mars Hill that time was Tyson Daniels, and it's third down and 14. Well, that's just absolutely a breakdown there, and good good job by Mars Hill's defense because they were the one that, that went driving in through there. But uh, not either way, the Pioneers having to punch football. Yeah. So third down coming up here, third down and 14 for the Pioneers. And you expect to see a lot of blitz today from Mars Hill. Handoff on third and 14 to Gamillion. He will be upended as he makes it around the 36-yard line, and it'll be fourth down now for the Pioneers. That was a play ahead of myself. Now they're penal. <laughs> And Mars Hill's going to call a timeout with a minute 10 to play here in this first half. So coming up at the half, we'll look at this week in Tusculum Athletics. Basketball teams are back in action and underway right now. We've been updating you with some scores, so we'll recap their games last night. Bowling is up in Madison, Wisconsin this weekend. Men's soccer will be in the SAC quarterfinals tomorrow. That'll be a 2 o'clock start. We'll talk about all that coming up at the half, plus your first half statistics and your highlights, which has not been much so far here in this first half. Highlighted by a Craig Rucker 31-yard touchdown reception. 
which has given Mars Hill the 7-3 to three lead here in this first half. The men's soccer uh, game be hosted right here at Pioneer Field. Anderson beat Tusculum soccer earlier this year one to nothing. And so Pioneers will have a chance for some revenge, also have a chance to defend their tournament championship from last year. Yeah, that's one thing about uh, the way the setup is, get in the tournament and anything can happen. It's those results that the Pioneers had early in the season, all that's away oh, now just gone. win. Pioneers are seven-time tournament champions. The leaders in the South Atlantic Conference in that regard. So Cantrell on to punt the ball away for the Pioneers. And Craig Recker stands at the 30. Marseille called the timeout to stop the clock with 1.10 to play. And they have two remaining. Good pass. And Cantrell's punt is away. It's short on the rugby style. It hits inside the 35 and will roll at the 30 and be touched up there where Marseille will take over first and 10. Clock stopped exactly 60 seconds remaining. So the Pioneers, with one minute to play to defend, again will receive the second half kickoff, but they trail in the game here 7-3. to three. Basketball scores for Tusculum women are at King. King stretching its lead down in the second quarter, 27-19. Tusculum men basketball versus Clayton State. Pioneers are up 31-21. Trenton Gibson again last night with the first triple-double. 17.11 rebound, 12 assists game. 11 of those assists came in the second half. The Pioneers used a 27-2 run to start the second half. And Gibson becomes the first triple-double honoree since Mason Fox accomplished that about five years ago. Before this play can get started, false start against Mars Hill will back them up five yards. Volleyball action, Brian uh, Wing at rally back to win the first game over Tusculum, 26-24. Football scores at half, Carson Newman leads Limestone, 24-17. Little Ryan's up 14-10 over Pembroke late in the first quarter. And UVA Wise is holding a 21-14 lead over Catawba with seven minutes, 13 Seven minutes, 13 seconds left in that football game. First and 15 for Mars Hill. Urzua to pass. Looking, looking, and looking to go downfield. And this one is going to be incomplete. Malik Goodman defending Ferguson. And another flag thrown in the backfield. They're finally going to get a hold here when it doesn't matter at the end of the first half, I think. And we have put all sorts of pressure on the quarterback. And Mars Hill's offensive line has done a good job. But this will be a chop block against the uh, Mars Hill Lions to back him up 15 yards. Now, the Pioneers have two timeouts remaining and 54 seconds to play as the ball moves further back toward the Mars Hill end zone. Uh, still first down, though, but anything can happen. Mars Hill's coming out here slinging it all over the place. Yeah, I mean, it's been another good opportunity to see if we couldn't get an interception and ru run it back. So 54 seconds to play. Mars Hill leads 7-3. to three. First half. And Urzua will come out of the gun. Three down linemen, and they're just going to run it right up the middle this time, up to about the 17-yard line. And Jerry Odom will call a timeout. So he'll burn one here to make it second down mm, a little closer, more like 24, maybe 23 yards to go. So the Pioneers burn their second timeout. Next week, Joe and I will be down the road, the Battle of US 11E. This is the Battle of Sam's Gap, Battle of US 11E next week down in Mossy Creek, where the Pioneers haven't won down there since 1934. Yeah, it's uh, also the site of Tuscombe's largest ever win. They hung True. 100 on the Eagles back about that same time. So was that, like 113-3 to three or something yeah, along something those lines? Yeah, something ridiculous like that. Have we'll know a lot it. more about that next week. However, Tusculum and Carson Newman and the Eagles battling with Limestone. They led it 21 to nothing, and Limestone has rallied. They trail 24 to 17 there at halftime. So, again, Limestone has been a dangerous team since the Pioneers dismantled them 38 to 10 in the Pioneers' third game of the year. First win of the season after opening up a couple of uh, very tough uh, Gulf South opponents. Pioneers last year defeat Carson Newman here at home, ending the year on the bright note. Put up 41 points as well, the most points they've scored against the uh, Eagles in a win. Say it's that 100-point game they scored. So second down, 24 coming up. Next week, join us for our Pioneer kickoff show coverage at noon. Kickoff will be at 1 o'clock. 
at Mossy Creek. If the Pioneers are going to score 41 next week, they're going to have to figure out how to score some more this week. Yeah, three right now here at the half. Another handoff, and up to the 20-yard line will go Chris Roberts, and the Pioneers will burn their final timeout. And uh, Tim Clifton's been around here too long and too long to know. I'll throw once to see if I can't get a big play. You've only got two timeouts. I can run the clock out on the very next play. So I'm just going to run it. We're going to get to half. Guarantee that's what he's thinking. Yeah, and, I mean, we've done all this. It's it's worse than a basketball game because mm-hmm. we started this with a minute to go about seven minutes ago. <laughs> <laughs> Mars Hill, meanwhile, next week will close out their regular season. They will host the Wingate Bulldogs next week. Wingate defeated by the Lenore Ride Bears, but it's still in prime position to be into the postseason with those regional rankings that came out. The new number one team in the region, by the way, is Lenore Ride, and Valdosta State did not lose last week. And LR jumped because of their win against Wingate. Well, I mean, and that was a, a big game, that Lenore Ryan versus Wingate. You know, two top 20 teams at the... At that point, both undefeated, and a lot of fans turned out for that one. And here's what Mars Hill's thinking. They're thinking Carson Newman is in there right now at, what, 5-2, and two, the uh, ranking, the re- schedule there. Virginia State, Virginia Union, Albany State all have two losses. West Georgia's in at number 10 at 6-3. and three. Yes, Mars Hill's 5-4 and four their record, but they are 5-3 and three against Division II opponents. They find a way to win their final two. They're talking we should at least have an opportunity to, to have a chance to be in the postseason. Well, so, Mars Hill a lot to play. Whenever you're talking that stuff, I mean, we're getting into high school playoff situation now where you yeah. had nine of 24 teams with losing records playing last night. True. Another handoff, and this should end the first half of play as Roberts will only make it to about the 23-yard line. Again, Tim Clifton was not, not going to take any chances knowing that, you know, they would get to the – we we'll just run it and try to run this clock out. That'll be the case. So uh, there's no reason to even be punting or even run a play, and the Pioneers are going to receive this second-half kickoff. So, Joe, a lot of promise to begin this game, three and out. Pioneer offense looked good, get down to the two, but then the same old problems. Can't get into the end zone. Can't get into the end zone on offense and can't get off the field on third down defensively. And that's why Mars Hill is going to take, a, albeit a narrow lead, into the locker room at halftime. Yeah, on that 86-yard touchdown drive of 15 plays, they converted third and 15, third and nine, and another third and 15, I believe it was, on that drive. And the touchdown was third and 15, which Craig Rucker was actually downed at the two, but they gave him the, the touchdown on the leap into the end zone. So that will be the end of the first half. And when we come back, a look at this week in Tenskillum Athletics, your first half stats and one highlight of the first half that's when we continue with more of our pioneer football look it's military and first responders appreciation day and senior day at pioneer field and at the half it's mars hill seven and tusculum three pioneer football will continue after this on the pioneer sports network family food's here What's it mean to you? To us, it means the people you care about, look out for, and yeah, love. Even if you'd never let them hear you say it. Hey, you're eating hummus? What's wrong with hummus? Here at Ingalls, we have everything you need to gather around the table and give each other a hard time. Because that's what families do. Ingalls. All the ingredients for family. Hello, my name is Jacob Fate, and I'm the Dean of the College of Business at Tusculum University. I'm proud to share with you that the programs in the College of Business received accreditation through ACBSP in December of 2018. The Accreditation Council for Business Schools and Programs accredits business schools and programs worldwide. This accreditation elevates our programs to the top programs worldwide. We are in Grange County, Tennessee here at Pierce Farms and uh, the Pierce family has been working with Ingalls for over 30 years. It means a great deal supplying uh, produce as a local farmer. Uh, it really touches base knowing that we're just simple people just trying to help and we love what we do and Ingalls is a huge part of helping us do it. Farming is who we are and it's in our blood. God has really blessed us with the sun and the soil to grow the best tomatoes you'll find anywhere. <laughs> I believe it's really in the soil. So if you're in Granger County and you farm tomatoes then you're, you're in. <laughs> just a great blessing on us to actually farm and be able to farm and to supply tomatoes to people and Ingalls really cares about family farms like Pierce Farms and they really care about their customers. We're just glad to be a part of that. God has blessed us with a really great partnership there. They make fresh local produce have real meaning for lots of people. 
I'm Shane Pierce, and this is my Ingle story. So much of life these days is rushing around from one place to another. Sometimes you just want to enjoy the journey on the way to the destination. And part of what makes it a little more enjoyable is an appreciation for the folks who help you get there. At Ingalls, we know that the people who send you on your way are the same ones who keep you coming back. I think you should take it for a spin. Are you serious? <laughs> Ingalls, all the ingredients for family. The first date. Only one chance to make that first impression. Don't worry, this might be new for you, but Ingalls has been there before. From flowers to the freshest ingredients, we have everything you need to put your best foot forward. I'm so sorry. Remember, you can't get to happily ever after without once upon a time. Ingalls, all the ingredients for family. Tusculum University is Tennessee's first university. Established in 1794, Tusculum's beautiful campus is nestled in the foothills of the Great Smoky Mountains. Students from 31 states and 15 countries have found a home here. With nearly 60 areas of study, Tusculum can help you pioneer your path to success. Visit www.tusculum.edu or call 423-636-7300 to discover the pioneer experience for yourself. It's fine, it'll be okay, okay? Nobody, nobody cares about the flowers. Who needs flowers at a, a wedding? At Ingalls, we know that the best of plans don't always go according to plan. My best friend's getting married today and the florist never showed. That's why we're always there when you need us. What are their colors? Purple and cream. With smiling faces and helping hands. No one cares, no one cares, you will look great. Flowers are not important. And where is Holly? Uh, have you, any, anyone seen Holly? And although life will be predictably unpredictable. Let's get you to that wedding. A curveball is that much more satisfying. I got the flowers! When you knock it out of the park. Oh my gosh, it's awesome! So when the plan goes out the window, and improvisation becomes the order of the day, just remember, that's where the best of memories are made. All right, they're ready for us. True story. Ingalls, all the ingredients for family.
family. Food's here! What's it mean to you? To us, it means the people you care about, look out for, and yeah, love. Even if you'd never let them hear you say it. Hey, you're eating hummus? What's wrong with hummus? Here at Ingalls, we have everything you need to gather around the table and give each other a hard time. Because that's what families do. Ingalls, all the ingredients for family. Hello, my name is Jacob Fate, and I'm the Dean of the College of Business at Tusculum University. I'm proud to share with you that the programs in the College of Business received accreditation through ACBSP in December of 2018. The Accreditation Council for Business Schools and Programs accredits business schools and programs worldwide. This accreditation elevates our programs to the top programs worldwide. We are in Granger County, Tennessee, here at Pierce Farms, and uh, the Pierce family has been working with Ingalls for over 30 years. It means a great deal supplying uh, produce as a local farmer. Uh, it really touches base knowing that we're just simple people just trying to help, and we love what we do, and Ingalls is a huge part of helping us do it. Farming is who we are, and it's in our blood. God has really blessed us with the sun and the soil to grow the best tomatoes you'll find anywhere. <laughs> I believe it's really in the soil. So if you're in Granger County and you farm tomatoes, then you're, you're in. <laughs> Just a great blessing on us to actually farm and be able to farm and to supply tomatoes to people. And Ingalls really cares about family farms like Pierce Farms, and they really care about their customers. We're just glad to be a part of that. God has blessed us with a really great partnership there. They make fresh local produce have real meaning for lots of people. I'm Shane Pierce, and this is my Ingalls story. So much of life these days is rushing around from one place to another. Sometimes you just want to enjoy the journey on the way to the destination. And part of what makes it a little more enjoyable is an appreciation for the folks who help you get there. At Ingalls, we know that the people who send you on your way are the same ones who keep you coming back. I think you should take it for a spin. Are you serious? <laughs> Ingalls, all the ingredients for family. First date. Only one chance to make that first impression. Don't worry. This might be new for you, but Ingalls has been there before. From flowers to the freshest ingredients, we have everything you need to put your best foot forward. I'm so sorry. Remember, you can't get to happily ever after without once upon a time. Ingalls, all the ingredients for family. 
Tusculum University is Tennessee's first university. Established in 1794, Tusculum's beautiful campus is nestled in the foothills of the Great Smoky Mountains. Students from 31 states and 15 countries have found a home here. With nearly 60 areas of study, Tusculum can help you pioneer your path to success. Visit www.tusculum.edu or call 423-636-7300 to discover the pioneer experience for yourself. It's fine. It'll be okay, okay? Nobody nobody cares about the flowers. Who needs flowers at a, a wedding? At Ingalls, we know that the best of plans don't always go according to plan. My best friend's getting married today and the florist never showed. That's why we're always there when you need us. What are their colors? Purple and cream. With smiling faces and helping hands. No one cares. No one cares. You will look great. Flowers are not important. And where is Holly? Uh, have you any, anyone seen Holly? And although life will be predictably unpredictable. Let's get you to that wedding. A curveball is that much more satisfying. I got the flowers! When you knock it out of the park. Oh my gosh, it's awesome! So when the plan goes out the window, and improvisation becomes the order of the day, just remember, that's where the best of memories are made. All right, they're ready for us. True story. Ingalls, all the ingredients for family. family. Food's here! What's it mean to you? To us, it means the people you care about, look out for, and yeah, love. Even if you'd never let them hear you say it. Hey, you're eating hummus? What's wrong with hummus? Here at Ingalls, we have everything you need to gather around the table and give each other a hard time. Because that's what families do. Ingalls, all the ingredients for family. Hello, my name is Jacob Faith and I'm the Dean of the College of Business at Tusculum University. I'm proud to share with you that the programs in the College of Business received accreditation through ACBSP in December of 2018. The Accreditation Council for Business Schools and Programs accredits business schools and programs worldwide. This accreditation elevates our programs to the top programs worldwide. We are in Granger County, Tennessee here at Pierce Farms, and uh, the Pierce family has been working with Ingalls for over 30 years. It means a great deal supplying uh, produce as a local farmer. Uh, it really touches base knowing that we're just simple people just trying to help, and we love what we do, and Ingalls is a huge part of helping us do it. Farming is who we are, and it's in our blood. God has really blessed us with the sun and the soil to grow the best tomatoes you'll find anywhere. <laughs> I believe it's really in the soil. So if you're in Granger County and you farm tomatoes, then you're, you're in. <laughs> Just a great blessing on us to actually farm and be able to farm and to supply tomatoes to people. And Ingalls really cares about family farms like Pierce Farms, and they really care about their customers. We're just glad to be a part of that. God has blessed us with a really great partnership there. They make fresh local produce have real meaning for lots of people. I'm Shane Pierce, and this is my Ingalls story.
by your Greenville Light and Power System, Wash Depot, Hometown Realty and Auctions, the Red, White, and Blue Marathon Quick Stop Markets, Greenville Federal Bank, Terry's Flooring, Gateway Ford, Lincoln Nissan, Corley's Pharmacy, Andrew Johnson Bank, and now Joe Bird, Justin Jeffers, and the voice of the Pioneers, Brian Staten. Pioneer Football kicks off. So we welcome you back into the broadcast booth. Brian State and Joe Bird, game station engineer is Nathan Humbert as the uh, Pioneers trail 7-3 to three here. Basketball season this week for us. Justin Jeffers will have the call Tuesday night as the Tuscaloosa women entertain Clayton State. And then on Wednesday, the men back in action. And I'll have that with the Pioneers right here. Uh, there's scores in the South Atlantic Conference. Uh, interesting what's going on down in Hickory. Uh, yeah, it is uh, number seven uh, undefeated in Lenore Ryan. Actually now trail UNC Pembroke. UNC Pembroke, the Braves lead that game 17-14 and that is in the second quarter of the games at half. Carson Newman 24 Limestone 17 at uh, Gaffney, South Carolina. And this game 146 left. Probably gone final by now. We don't have an update. Uh, UVA Wise hosting Catawba. UVA Wise leads that game 21 14 and those basketball games at the half Tusculum women trail king 35 32 and Tusculum men lead clayton state 35 23 again the basketball teams will be at home a long time last year before they even got home we were on the road all of the first half of the basketball season and that game has gone final joe uh University of Virginia at Wise picks up a South Atlanta Conference victory over Catawba in that game 21-14 for the Highland Cavaliers. Lyndon Redwine goes 17-33 of in the game for 206 yards. The Dobbins-Bennett product did not play at all against the Pioneers. Kalen Wade goes 20-43, of just 174 was picked off twice in the game as well. Wise racked up 340 yards of offense in that game. And that win for UVA Wise, uh, conference newcomer, that is their first South Atlantic Conference victory coming against the team at one conference championship just a couple of seasons ago. So big win for Coach Dane Dameron and the uh, Wise Cavaliers. They got started at brunch. Let's start the second half. It'll be Fox to kick it away to the Pioneers. It'll be another short kick. It'll be fielded by Gamillion at the 28. Gamillion near side return 30, 35, and he's tripped up at about the 37, maybe the 38-yard line. And that's where the Pioneers will take over first and 10, and it'll be Joaquin Colazzo who will start the second half for Tuscaloosa. Update scores, Brian. Uh, now we know in the second quarter, Lenore Ryan leads UNC Pembroke 21-17, and Carson Newman and Limestone are in a shootout. Carson Newman leading 24-20. Basketball scores in the third quarter. Tuscaloosa women are tied with King at 37. Tuscaloosa men up 39-29 in the second half over Clayton State. So first and 10 for the Pioneers, it's Joaquin Colazzo for Tusculum. Thurlow Wilkins is the running back to start things here in the third. And Wilkins will get the carry at the 40. Wilkins at the 50. Wilkins at the 40. He's spun down at the 32-yard line. First and 10 for the Pioneers. Touchdown saving tackle by Trey Giles. And that's Thurlow Wilkins finally breaking free. And that absolutely is what, uh, what that was. That was a breakthrough run by Thurlow Wilkins to get the Pioneers in good shape. They just can't do what they did in the first half. Down to the 32-yard line of Mars Hill. And the Pioneers already in business to start this second half. Ponder and Bellinger with Moss to the near side. Colazzo works out of the gun, and Wilkins lines up right behind him out of that pistol formation. Colazzo will change the play, turn around, and look at Wilkins. On first down and 10, handed off to Thurlow Wilkins with more daylight at the 30. Breaks a tackle at the 20, runs through one at the 15, and takes it all the way down to the 10-yard line as Thurlow Wilkins has it first and goal at the 9 for the Pioneers. Yeah, that's the kind of ball uh, running we like to see by Thurlow Wilkins and the Pioneers. Uh, big thing about it is ball security now. We've seen him fumble before. We've seen him fumble already today. <laughs> it's taken three and four guys to get him down, and you know that somebody's trying desperately to strip the football. So after a 30-yard run, Wilkins gets the ball back and gets it inside the 10-yard line and down to the 9. One man in the formation as a wideout. That's A.J. Bellinger. It's double tight, and now they'll adjust the offensive line and move it to the right, and actually they're going to throw a flag. They're going to say the Pioneers jumped, or everybody's jumping. We're moving the offensive line. So I... They're going to get Brandon Harrison. On a false start, so back to the 14-yard line. Well, that's just a product of the current trend in college football, not just the Pioneers. All teams are doing it. You go down and pretend like you're set, and then you have to get up and move people around. Just 
set up and run the play. And Wilkins. you don't have to worry about it. Exactly. Wilkins has picked up 53 yards in each of the last two runs. And now on a out of a straight eye, Will Boney is the fullback for the Pioneers. Mars Hill shows corner blitz. They run to that side, and Wilkins finds a little daylight, and then it's just kind of shut down on first and goal from the 14. He'll take it down to about the 13-yard line, and there to finish him off was Landon Honeycutt out of Mount Pleasant, North Carolina. Another scoring update, Brian, in volleyball. Wingett has taken a two-game-to-nothing lead over Tusculum, that game in Wingett, North Carolina. Uh, Wingett Bulldogs 26-24 and 25-22. So it will bring up... Second down and goal at the 13 for the Pioneers. They go with a wishbone look. Moss and Bellinger in the backfield with Colazzo, and now everybody will displace, and the Pioneers will go empty. Colazzo out of the gun to pass. Looking, 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 dancing around. Throws it into the corner of the end zone for Moss. Incomplete. And it's going to bring up third down and goal from the 13-yard line. Good defense in the secondary by the Mars Hill Lions. Moss is back there dancing around trying to make something happen, spin one way, spin the other. But even he, he did get free, but the football was thrown out the back corner of the end zone anyway. Moss not having the type of freshman year that he had. Just 11 catches, 133 yards this season for Jake Moss, where he burst onto the team, led the team in receiving touchdowns last year. Either that is just getting him the ball. Haven't been able to do that. So Colazzo out of the gun. Gamillion is in the backfield for the Pioneers. From the 13 of Mars Hill. Blitz comes and Colazzo is going to get rid of it. Throw it to the end zone. It's going to be caught by Moss. The aforementioned Jake Moss as Colazzo is being sacked by Earl Adams. Gets it complete. Touchdown, Pioneers. Touchdown, Jacob Moss. His second of the year. Well, that's one of those things where at this particular time, I'm glad we don't have a video scoreboard because there are no pictures on this scoreboard. That was as ugly as can be, but it counts just the same as a beautiful play. Pioneers take the lead on the 13-yard touchdown reception. We're celebrating so much, you don't have enough personnel to kick an extra point. Don't burn the timeout. Just throw somebody out there. So Broadwater's going to run out. It's supposed to be Solo's job. But uh, Solo was too busy celebrating with his offensive teammates. So Shepard to attempt the point. Snap, hold, kick is up and good. And the Pioneers, first drive of the second half, off to a promising start. Back with more of your Pioneer football senior day festivities. 12-28 to play in the third. Tusculum 10, Mars Hill 7. Pioneer football continues on the Pioneer Sports Network. So much of life these days is rushing around from one place to another. Sometimes you just want to enjoy the journey on the way to the destination. And part of what makes it a little more enjoyable is an appreciation for the folks who help you get there. At Ingalls, we know that the people who send you on your way are the same ones who keep you coming back. I think you should take it for a spin. Are you serious? <laughs> Ingalls, all the ingredients for family. Along with Joe Bird, where the Pioneers get on the board after 53 yards rushing by Thurlow Wilkins to get them down inside the 10. A penalty backs him up. Two attempts to get in failed. Then on third down, the Pioneers get into the end zone on the 13-yard pass completion to Jake Moss from Joaquin Colazzo. Colazzo with the uh, touchdown toss, number seven on the year, number two receiving for Jake Moss. Again, I was just saying, led the team in receiving touchdowns last year, and good to see that Jake Moss is back into the end zone for the first time in some time for the Pioneers. They uh, convert the uh, the point after is good by Eli Shepard. So to start the second half, the drive goes five plays, 62 yards. That takes 225 off the clock. Big drive for the Pioneers. Not always pretty, not uh, mistake-free, but the result was getting into the end zone for a touchdown and retaking the lead in this football game. Rucker is back deep with Ferguson as Andrzejewski gets set to put foot to leather and will kick away from Craig Rucker to the far side to Ferguson at the 14. 20. 25 as he is tripped up there in the backfield and a good special teams play made by the Pioneers' Trey Trawick, the freshman out of Milledgeville, Georgia, his second special teams tackle in the game. And obviously, the Pioneer offense made some adjustments at halftime to come out here and do what they've done. Let's hope that the defense has done the same and they can get off the field on third downs. So 12.20 to play. The first look at the Mars Hill offense as they will uh, step onto the field. 
as Urzua with a phenomenal first half. See if those adjustments can happen. Roberts is the running back. Ferguson and Harbison to the near side. Rutgers in the slot far side with Gilbert Johnson. So Urzua will run it with the play action pass looking to the sideline but out of bounds after it's caught by Harbison. But good pressure right there by P.J. Green of the Pioneers with the penalty flag thrown. And we, I was just going to say another penalty flag on the play. Illegal man downfield going against Mars Hill, which would back it up to first and 15. Jerry Odom contemplating the birth, birthday boy last Thursday. Say, let's go ahead and back him up five more. Yeah, you know, it's one of those situations. Do you take first and 15, give him another play? and get the yards or just leave it at second down and 10 because it was thrown out of bounds. They like that Seinfeld music this year. They do. Ron has been asking me if they pay royalties to all that stuff. I'm going to say no, they don't. Probably not. First and 15, or Zua to pass across the middle complete, 25-30, as Harbison is just tripped up by Ty Corey and Brown, but a big gainer on first and 15. He's going to pick up close to 18 yards on the play, first and 10. Mars Hill just having a good job there with picking apart this Tusculum defense. Can't get any pressure on the quarterback. Have not been able to get to Urzua with any type of regularity. And so the Mars Hill Lion offensive line has done its job today, keeping Urzua with the clean shirt. And he is just picking apart the secondary because he's got some time back there in the pocket. 10-7 to 7 for the uh, Mars Hill Lions. A pin and pull as they pass complete. This will be Rucker, and Brown is out there to make that stop as he will move it up close to the 45. They'll say the 40s. What are they going to say? They're going to put that down. 46? He didn't, even get, he didn't cross the 45-yard line. Uh, very uh, beneficial spot there for, if you're the Lions. And... Uh, Taking advantage of moving it down now second and about two or three. Some crazy spots today. Gain of eight. Second down and two for the Mars Hill Lions. As Rucker is going to line up in the slot to the near side. Alfred will come over here near side to him as well. They're going to hand it off. This will be Roberts running near side. He'll have the first down as he'll have the midfield stripe. And now they'll say down to the Pioneer 49. First and ten for the Mars Hill Lions. Good run there and... Uh, just yeah, enough to get what they needed to do. At least it wasn't getting up, giving up a big third down first, but uh, still uh, Mars Hill was able to run through and pick up a fresh set of downs. Not a whole lot behind the line of scrimmage for the Pioneers today outside of the first couple of drives. Since then, Mars Hill's balanced attack, I think, because they run just enough. A little misdirection handoff this time, and Xavier Clemens will pull will get the tackle on Roberts and he did tackle him head high but I don't think he grabbed the face mask I just think he tackled him it, it, you know it looked like he, his arm was up kind of around the shoulder pads and neck there but whether he got the face mask I don't know oh, I gotta see this uh, they gave record again they gave record the 46 he never crossed the 45 first of all and now this is a penalty against the Pioneers for a personal foul face mask against Clemens. Did make a very high tackle on Roberts. But the umpire standing right there. So he had the, uh, likely the best view of it, but I would still... And the ball carriage back was to us. so we. Yeah. It's hard to see, and he was in the muck. Here it is, first and 10 from the 33-yard line as Mars Hill trails 10-7. On their first offensive drive here of the second half, they hand it off to Roberts, who does well to get back to the line. That's solo, Solomon Hunter, with that, with the tackle. And again, you can't tell just by looking at some of the replays on that last flag. But again, it was it looked just like a, a just the tackle. Let's play uh, another run and play by the Lions. They just picked up one yard, and they're trying to slow things down now very much. So. As the play clock runs down, all the lines looking over at head coach Tim Clifton to get a play. Urzua set to snap it on second down and nine. Play action pass across the middle is incomplete, and D. Alford's going to be flagged for a penalty. It looked like he had pretty good coverage. And, oh, by the way, I just did get a glimpse of it as they slowed down the, uh, the replay. No way that was face mask. No way. 
Or I heard they offered, made a very good play to dive across and knock the football down, but they're going to get called for pass interference. Move Mars Hill that much closer to the end zone. Came from the back judge, and he might have had an arm draped around Craig Rucker. So the uh, Craig Rucker show causing some havoc. This will be a spot foul. Automatic first down, which is now the 19. Interestingly enough, this is the first trip in the red zone for the Mars Hill Lions today. They trail 10 to 7, but a very methodical second half drive, much like the Pioneers, which was all on the ground, and then they get a passing touchdown out of it. And now this will be uh, Urzua again as he just pulls the ball away after he fakes the handoff. Again, that kind of pin and pull, but under a lot of pressure by Hunter and company. It's incomplete as he throws it out of the back of the end zone. That's what I'm impressed with Herzua about. If it's not there, he just throws it away. Just throws it away. I mean, he was under heavy pressure. He didn't panic. Knew he was going to get hit, and he still managed not to make a silly mistake that would cause his team to get the ball intercepted. Oh, well, uh, there's a penalty flag down. And a penalty that is down. That's in the uh, middle of the field at around the 15-yard line. It's going to back up Mars Hill. Illegal man downfield. It's Mars Hill's 10th penalty of the afternoon. 10 for the Lions, 7 for the Pioneers. 10 for 90. I had the over-under at 19, and I took the over. Good, Combined. You know, good uh, good call. Good call. Second down, make that. And it is going to be second down and 15. Yes. No? I don't remember was a first down play. So they're going to just adjust the down the uh, the marker. I believe it is first down. It is. Lollipop says 2 needs to say 1. The lines are overlooking like uh, oh, did we call a timeout? And they've got Yeah. Uh, Everybody kind of moving around out on the field. They do have time to get down because the play clock restarted at 25, and it's just now running, but still. So first down and 15 from the 24 of Tusculum. Tusculum leading at 10-7. to 7. Pioneer show blitz. They bring the pressure, but it's picked up. Pass across the middle is going to be picked off. D. Alford this time with his second in the game as he undercuts the intended target and in Craig Rucker, and unfortunately he loses his footing and goes down at the six, but the Pioneers turn away the threat. Great job by D. Alford there. His second interception of the day. Pretty much like, like the same play where he got the penalty a moment ago, but this time instead of coming through, batting the ball down and getting the penalty, he just intercepted it. Nine career interceptions for D. And, uh, boy, I tell you what, one of the 27 seniors, and he is going to be sorely missed. Oh, absolutely. Just, I mean, what he's done last year, this year, everything, um, just here today, is, is coming up big for the Pioneers. His interception return yardage should put him first all time. He had Jermaine Mack to pass at 175, so the one that he had in the first half went more than 30 yards. So he is going to be the all-time interception return yards leader. And his two interceptions today give him 10 for his career, moving him to third all-time. Coakley with 15, Jermaine Mack with 11, and now D. Alford with 10 for his career, third all-time. And the Pioneers uh, tried to huddle with too many guys out there, so now we're going to be penalized half the distance to the goal back to the three. Substitution penalty, that makes it eight for the Pioneers. So you're one away from the 19 and then you know two for you to beat it. First and 13, Thurlow Wilkins is the running back. Colazzo comes under center for the Pioneers. Handed off to Wilkins, and he has the five up to about the six, maybe the seven-yard line. And uh, the spots today have been very, very interesting as the tackle is made by Nigel Bowden, the uh, graduate student out of Vanderbilt University. To bring up second and ten. Thurlow Wilkins picking up the yardage that uh, the Pioneers lost on the penalty. So we go under nine to play here in the third. So the Pioneers get the second pick of Urzua, his 10th of the season, and Alford with his 10th career interception. Under center will come Colazzo Thurlow Wilkins, the lone man behind him. A.J. Bellinger lines up to the far side. They run to the boundary side, and this will be Wilkins who will fight his way up to about the nine. So it's going to create third down and seven coming up for the Pioneers. So they will say he actually went down at the eight. Yeah, so here are the Pioneers. Are you conceding this and knowing that you're going to be punting again? Do you try to look downfield? Do you hope that you can get another one of those big double-digit runs from your running back? 
all, all things Mars Hill has to consider. Tusculum's thir- three and seven on third downs today. So they come with Deshaun Davis in the slot far side, Bellinger far side, Moss and Ponder come to the near side. And it will be Maurice Gamillion in the passing package for the Pioneers. Mars Hill shows blitz. Picked up. Pass. Complete to Ponder at the 16. And Ponder will spin his way up to the 19-yard line. It'll move the chains. First and 10 for the Pioneers. Great job there by uh, the Pioneers. And Ponder to catch the football. Keep hold of the football and get a first down for Tuscan. Ponder and Bellinger to the two top targets so far this season. Jordan Shippey, again, not playing today. Injured in the win last week against Catawba. Saving a touchdown after the fumble return. All the way down to the 20-yard line. Missing today. Hopefully he's back for next week against Carson Newman. 83 yards shy of 2,000 yards rushing for a career. Maurice Gamillion will get the handoff, and it looked as if he had daylight for a moment, but Mr. Bowden says, I got you, and he brings him down as he crosses the 20 to the 21-yard line. He gains two. It's second down and eight. Minimal pickup for uh, Gamillion there, just not able to hit the hole that they wanted and try to get upfield. Thurlow Wilkins re-entering the game for Tuscan. Seven minutes to play in the third. The Pioneers lead at 10-7. to seven. As this drive began on the D. Alford interception to end the Mars Hill drive. Joaquin Colazzo started the game. Bryce Moore got a couple of series in that first half. And Colazzo back to start this second half. Pass is going to be complete. This will be Arthur complete at the 25-30 and up to the 34-yard line. Good play right there. Well designed by Brian Ferguson and Colazzo. Just kind of getting in a little bit of a rhythm here in this second half. Yeah, I mean, right now that was kind of reminiscent of the plays that Mars Hill's been running all first half. So maybe the Pioneers took a look and said, hey, that seems to be working against us. Let's see if we can make it work for us. You know, coaches are the best copycats, period. Hey, that worked for them. Let's try it this week for us. Instead, we did a little self-scouting. And just went ahead and started in this game. Uh, you don't have to reinvent the wheel. You just yeah. have to execute. Ponder, Bellinger, Moss to the far side after Arthur makes that catch. Wilkins in the backfield with Colazzo. He'll get the run. And uh, Colazzo was actually, I should say, that Wilkins was hit almost as soon as he handed off. As Keevy on Broadwater was kind of blown up on a run blitz to that far side. They hold Wilkins to just a gain of about a yard up to the 35. It'll bring up second and nine. Yeah, it's a shame that uh, Thurlow Wilkins didn't look back to his left and see that this entire side of the field was open. As it was, he tried to run the play. It was designed, and the Pioneers didn't get much. So the Pioneers line up Ponder to the far side this time. To the near side is Arthur in that slot with Moss and Bellinger. Colazzo steps back into the gun. On second down to nine, Wilkins on his right shoulder. And before we can get underway, false start will go against the Pioneers. Scores coming in. Uh, first of all, T- Tusculum women's bowling. Tusculum, uh, I don't know how to read bowling scores. <laughs> don't read the score. What they finish? I don't know. Uh, not, okay, I get it. Uh, oh, they beat LMU? Yeah, they beat M- LMU. I got this now. Tusculum uh, beat LMU, number 13, national ranked LMU yeah. in bowling. 942 to 910. So it's 942 pins to 910. Okay. I, I was just saying 9 slash 10, and I was, that's, or 9 slash 0. I was like, I'm not like sure. Like September 10th? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I, I understand now. I was Second and 14 for the Pioneers after the five-yard markoff. That's 19 penalties for the game. Here's Wilkins. They'll stop and go. And, they, and again, another run blitz by Mars Hill, and they just, just, swarmed him in the backfield and just blew him up. And that's really more or less just that defensive front and that defensive line led by Antoine McClee, a freshman out of Gastonia, North Carolina. Uh, volleyball's going to it, final win, get taking that game 3-0 over Tusculum Pioneers. And men's basketball, Tusculum leads Clayton State 59-43. And the Tusculum women's basketball is extending its lead and now leads King 64-55 to in the fourth quarter. Third and 16 after the loss of two for the Pioneers. Can they convert another third down on this drive, which began at the six? Out to the 28. Colazzo to pass. Stepping away from pressure, throwing it downfield, and this one's going to be incomplete. Really didn't have anybody open that time, but just tried to make a play happen as he was looking downfield. I believe that was Deshaun Davis he was looking for, and it's fourth down. Football scores, Brian, as previously noted, UVA Wise wins at home today over Catawba 21-14. At the half, number seven, Lenore Ryan is up 24-17 over UNC Pembroke. 
And in the third quarter, you've got Carson Newman spreading it out 31 20 at Limestone. So Rucker is back deep. Cantrell to punt it away. It's a high snap. Cantrell gets it down and boots it away right to Rucker, who fields it at the 36. Coming to the near side, he's got some room. 40, 45. Rucker high stepping it and to midfield, and then it will be forced out by Will Boney at the Pioneer 46 yard line. So we kick to him, which is shocking to me. Well, I'm pretty sure it wasn't intended to, based on Coach Odom's reaction and uh, the way he approached Cantrell. So first and 10 for Mars Hill at the 46 yard line, as we've got two of the best punt returners in the league. And the Pioneers still lead. So we go to a break. This one brought to you by Bachman. 4.22 to play here in the third. With your score, it's Tusculum 10 and Mars Hill 7. We'll continue on Senior Day on the Pioneer Sports Network. The first date. Only one chance to make that first impression. Don't worry. This might be new for you, but Ingalls has been there before. From flowers to the freshest ingredients, we have everything you need to put your best foot forward. Oh, I'm so sorry. Sorry. Remember, you can't get to happily ever after without once upon a time. Ingalls, all the ingredients for family. Tusculum University is Tennessee's first university. Established in 1794, Tusculum's beautiful campus is nestled in the foothills of the Great Smoky Mountains. Students from 31 states and 15 countries have found a home here. With nearly 60 areas of study, Tusculum can help you pioneer your path to success. Visit www.tusculum.edu or call 423-636-7300 to discover the pioneer experience for yourself. Thirty-six renewal of this rivalry, Tusculum and Mars Hill. Pioneers have won each of the last two. Jerry Odom's first go-round with Mars Hill. He lost in overtime going for two. Pioneers have won two straight and four of the last six against the Lions. First down and ten as we come back out of this punt and this timeout. D. Alfred nearly had his third. Nearly had his third, and I'm not sure anyone catches him. It's knocked away, incomplete at second down. Yeah, it's a situation he tried to run before he really had the football tuck. Uh, either way, another good pass-up break by D. Offer. And again, just he's you know he's going to have career numbers at the end of this with pass breakups and interceptions. Already two today, 32 career passes defended coming into today, 115 tackles. And now 10 career interceptions moves him to third all-time. Jermaine Mack with 11. Ricardo Coakley with 15. Second and 10, 4.15 left here in the third. Another pin and pull as Urzua is under some pressure, and he's just going to let it fly out of bounds. Intended for Harvison. He wasn't outside of the pocket. He was still well inside the pocket. Jerry Odom is out past the numbers to say, look where he is. And uh, you can't just fling it, although he did have a receiver in the area. There's no, there's no way he's going to complete that. <laughs> well, yeah, since how the football went out of bounds over the players on the sideline, over the dead area, and was literally caught by one of the pioneers sitting here on the benches up against the hedges. So third and ten, and this has been the trouble down for the pioneers. Even though they only allow teams to convert 31% of the time, it's third and long that gets to them. Urzua steps up in the pocket, and this one's going to be incomplete, intended for Craig Rucker. And the Pioneers turn away this one. It's fourth down. Well, good uh, job by the Pioneers there. Now Marshall going to have to send its punt unit on. A uh, smart move here by Tim Clifton as well. Tanner Fox will try it on. You know, he may not have a strong leg or have a great net or just a great yardage average. What he can do is pin the Pioneers back inside the 10 right here. So with 3.58 to play, Fox is out. Alfred standing at the 10. See if he can keep it from going inside the 10-yard line once again. Oh, the, the snap is dropped, and they're going to throw for it. It's going to be incomplete, and really that should be a penalty for an ineligible receiver it as is. Fox dropped the snap, 
And the Pioneers are going to have the ball right at about midfield. So they'll have to tack on five yards for the penalty, which would give the ball to the Pioneers at the 50. One of the Mars Hill Lions does not understand an illegal touching. <laughs> uh, it, it's new to us as well. So the Pioneers w really... Oh, they're going to refuse the penalty, which I don't understand because... It's a smart play by Fox. You throw it, and you don't get caught back here at the 37-yard line. Mm -hmm. Instead, you give the ball to the Pioneers at their own 46. So, actually, yeah. it's a really smart penalty. But that'll be the 20th of the game. So, the over was uh, the way to go here today. Might not be a bad idea to take that next week. I just I tell you right now, though, that is a free pretzel appetizer from Applebee's. That's what that is. Ooh, that's okay. what that's that was the wager. Uh, okay. So the pretzel app, the pretzel appetizers, the pretzels, beer, cheese, and mustard. That's good stuff. First and ten from the 46 for the Pioneers. They lead it 10 to seven. Thurlow Wilkins behind Joaquin Colazzo. Hunley, the tight end to the near side. Two wideouts in the formation. They'll displace Mangle and Hunley to the right side. Out of the pistol formation, Colazzo turns and hands to uh, Wilkins from the boundary at midfield to the 45 to the 40, and he's taken out of bounds there. And a big gain, first and 10 for Thurlow Wilkins, closing in on his third consecutive 100-yard rushing game. I'll tell you who else, uh, Ben Murphy makes them mean. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah those, right, those are good, too. Yeah. He had a visit at the old Oak Tap Room right here across from Tuscaloosa University every once in a while. Ben is feeling a little down after the Black Knights were beaten last night. Football season has come to an end. Proud of the Buffalo scoring against uh, Alcoa. Yeah, scored. First down and 10 for the Pioneers. This will be Wilkins on a draw. 35, spins down to the 31-yard line and the running show of Thurlow Wilkins. Finally, our pregame as advertised, Rucker versus Wilkins is coming to fruition. Well, let's just hope it keeps being a whole lot more Wilkins and a lot less Rucker. Exactly. Three minutes to play in the third. In a low-scoring affair, but that's nothing new with this Pioneer team. They are very stingy, top defense in the South Atlantic Conference, allowing just 25 points a game. They've been uh, giving up a couple of big numbers to some opponents this year, but for the most part, they've really held things in check. Second and two from the 31 after the eight-yard game by Wilkins, which puts him over 100 yards for the day. Marseille jumped into the neutral zone, got back, handed off to Wilkins, breaking it outside. Wilkins at the 25, and he'll take it down to the 20-yard line. It'll be first and 10 for the Pioneers once again into the red zone. Well, let's see if they can uh, make something happen out of that scoring in the red zone. It's not been real good to the Pioneers this season or today. Of course, they're 0 for 0, or uh, 2 for 3, I'm sorry, scoring in the red zone. It's Thurlow Wilkins who's down. And that's bad news because Pioneers already without Jordan Shippey today due to the injury he sustained last week. Well documented already through the broadcast. If you're just joining us, Shippey was injured, saving a touchdown last week on a fumble return by Catawba down to the 20. And the uh, back who, uh, the uh, senior running back who had a chance to eclipse 2,000 yards for a career, 83 shy of 2,000. Not playing today. So we knew it would be Thurlow Wilkins and Maurice Gamillion. And then after that, it could be Gerald Hurst. Of course, the son of the great Georgia running back, Garrison Hurst. And so uh, it's a, hopefully Thurlow Wilkins will have a chance to get back into this one. And here's the replay taking a look at this. It uh, looks like he was just kind of hit from the side and his knee buckled just a little bit. But he is walking off. More or less under his own power, but certainly not in a comfortable way. Michael Hawkins is down there, the lead trainer for the football team. Would love to hear the conversation he's having with Thurlow about the potential injury to his knee. What was that? I couldn't hear you. Maybe I didn't speak up loud enough. Uh, okay. Clock is running, 2.20 as Wilkins is off. There's 15 seconds on the play clock as Maurice Gamillion and Joaquin Colazzo just get back to the line of scrimmage. So three wideouts in the formation, first and 10 from the 20. Wilkins leaves with 115 yards on the day at this moment. Three seconds on the play clock, bring Ponder in motion, and they run the jet sweep to him on the toss, trying to get outside. He stopped, and now he's in a lot of trouble behind the line of scrimmage, and he'll go down back at the 24-yard line. 
And I think he had the right idea. Just go ahead and reverse that thing and start taking off opposite direction. And he may score, but he tried to go back the same way he started the formation, and it's second and 14. Yeah, I mean, the first idea, he ran into traffic. He couldn't do a whole lot, so he tried to roll back the other way, which was wide open. And I'm not so sure that Colazzo wasn't looking at him, trying to get him to throw him the football. <laughs> right, yeah. Uh, but whenever he cut back to the left, it wasn't going to go anywhere. Straight eye, Boney the fullback, Gamillion the tailback, Ponder to the far side, Bellinger to the near side. Bellinger has not been involved in the offense since the first quarter. Nearly dropped the snap, Colazzo handed off to uh, Gamillion who fumbles the football and for the second time in the game, the Pioneers get into the red zone and turn it over. Well, we said two or three of the red zone and now it is two or four in the red zone and the two times they didn't, they turned the football over. There's a flag after the play as well, and this likely to go against the Pioneers. One of the offensive linemen getting uh, caught up with one of the defensive linemen for Mars Hill. But I'm telling you right now, it's issues, issues continue to mount, and it's not the play calling, it's just execution. Just got to execute better when they do get into the red zone. After the play was over, conduct, number 11, Mars Hill. Wow. So it will go against Mars Hill. Mars Hill, though, has the football, turning away the Pioneer threat. And the defense comes back onto the field for the Pioneers. And right now you just get the sense that this defense needs a score. Yeah, and that's uh, that would be nice if we could get D. Alford to get the football in his hands again, maybe get his third pick of the day and take it all the way back to the house. But that is the third unsportsmanlike conduct penalty against Coach Tim Clifton's Mars Hill Lions. Urzua and the Lions out of the gun. They'll bring Rucker in motion and hand it off to Chris Roberts. And Roberts looking for a little daylight from the 12-yard line. He actually finds a little bit as he next takes it up to the 14-yard line. Ivan Hogan's is there on the stop as Marcel trying to go in a hurry. Well, right now, under a minute to play in the third quarter. Nobody was set, and the pass actually behind the line of scrimmage. They haven't blown it dead. It's actually going to be picked up by the Pioneers and score! Touchdown, Pioneers! P.J. Green in for the end zone, and the Pioneer defense indeed gets the score. Well, great job of situational awareness by Green there. He realized that the ball was backwards. He realized that the whistle hadn't been blown while nobody else did, and the Pioneers are celebrating that great defensive touchdown. So happy for P.J. Green and getting into the end zone. Had the opportunity a couple of weeks ago on a scoop and score potential against Pembroke. 31 games, 47 tackles, 12 for loss, a fumble recovery. Now make that two and a touchdown. And off the field, he's been the play-by-play voice for the Pioneer lacrosse teams, women's volleyball, softball, also baseball. Smart kid. Helps us on the radio here with our high school coverage as well. So proud of P.J. Green getting into the end zone. Eli Shepard tacks on the point. The Pioneer defense does get into the end zone. And the Pioneers get a little breathing room. We go to a break. 43 seconds to play in the third. Tushkillum 17 and Mars Hill 7. Pioneer football will continue after this on the Pioneer Sports Network. Hello, my name is Jacob Faith, and I'm the Dean of the College of Business at Tusculum University. I'm proud to share with you that the programs in the College of Business received accreditation through ACBSP in December of 2018. The Accreditation Council for Business Schools and Programs accredits business schools and programs worldwide. This accreditation elevates our programs to the top programs worldwide. So the Pioneers, P.J. Green, upon further review, probably didn't get in, but that's karma. Yeah, it's the uh, second touchdown we've seen that uh, you only had to go 98 yards to get <laughs> to the two-yard line. It would count that good. <laughs> and then probably should have been flagged 15 yards for excessive celebration by doing a somersault, showing off his athleticism <laughs> after the score. And Juski sent to kick it away. As it is, the Pioneers get the big turnover they needed. Foot to leather, and Anjuski will go far side. And it'll be fielded by an up back at the 23-yard line. I think it's Johnson on the return. He found a little daylight himself. And he'll return it out to the 45-yard line, where it'll be first and 10 for Mars Hill. So, and, and a flag down yeah, well behind the play. I was going to say the 21st penalty flag of the day comes flying. 
So it's an infraction against Marzil. Back him up. So, Joe, and I said, and I was getting ready to say it. Sometimes coaches outthink themselves. You want to go with a little tempo, and against the Pioneer defense, not the smartest thing to do. They got right to the line of scrimmage and probably yelling, fire, 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 and got to the line, and nobody was set for Marzil. So fortunate they didn't throw a flag to stop the play because nobody was set for either side. But then Urzua's pass hits off the shin of Craig Rucker. And goes backwards. Yeah, and the ball was live, and yeah. not too many people realize that. Fortunately, the officials recognized that, and fortunately for us, P.J. Green recognized that. Uh, but I don't think the official was in a position to see that maybe the pass wasn't necessarily behind the, the line or behind the quarterback, but more or less just even with him. I think that's why Rucker didn't go back and try to fall on top of it. That, that penalty was against Mars Hill, and that backed them up. The Lions have the football now. going to start on their own 24. Well, the Pioneers have turned it over on fumbles in the red zone, and now Mars Hill returns the favor. Rucker on maybe a little halfback throw, and he's looking and throwing incomplete. Actually, a really smart play if he got the ball back to the line of scrimmage. But the Pioneers had that read beautifully. Alfred never left Harbison as they were going to give Rucker a chance to throw it. But, you know, he scored every single way this year. Maybe try to get him a touchdown pass in the process, too. Yeah, let's hope uh, nobody for the Lions gets a uh, touchdown pass or a touchdown run or anything else here today. Right now the Pioneers are taking a 17-7 lead as we close in on the end of the third quarter. 26 seconds on the clock here in the third. Tusculum with that 10-point lead by scoring 14 here in the third. Urzua out of the gun. He's going to hand it off this time. This will be Elijah Jett. Jett from the 25, 30, and taken down at about the 33, which would be very close to that first down marker. So Elijah Jett getting a little daylight. Of course, he used to wear number three. He's gained, uh, he's put on some uh, some muscle as well, has Jett, the senior out of Charlotte, North Carolina. He first came into the league, freshman of the Offensive Player of the Year. And he was thin and lightning quick. That will be the end of three quarters. It will be third down and a yard for Mars Hill when we come back to Pioneer Field. Senior day where the Pioneers lead. Tusculum 17, Mars Hill 7. Pioneer football will continue after this on the Pioneer Sports Network. So the Tusculum Pioneers lead 17-7 to here and elsewhere. Women's basketball and men's basketball with victories today. Both picking up the wins. I did catch the women's score 82-62 over King. I did not catch the final for, for men other than the fact that they did defeat Clayton State. 78-61 for the men. Meanwhile, Carson Newman and Limestone rather interesting in the fourth quarter. Limestone making a game of it. Eight minutes, 30 seconds to go. Carson Newman hanging on to a 34-27 lead there in Gaffney. Uh, very late. Uh, see. Nope, other games we do know UVA-wise picked up the win, 21-14 over Catawba. And we don't have an update on LRUNC Pembroke. Third and a yard this pass as we start the fourth quarter is complete to Ferguson. He'll have it up to the 37-yard line. That'll be first and 10 for Mars Hill. Good catch and uh, run. Really, or Actually, good uh, timing pattern by Urzua to Ferguson. Ferguson went out the rest of that first half. After he picked up his unsportsmanlike penalty in that first quarter, we didn't see him the rest of that half. All right, then because you get uh, two, you're done for the day. As a team, Mars Hill has three unsportsmanlike conduct penalties already, though. 
Ferguson, five catches, 66 yards. Make that six for 70 now. Urzua to pass, and he's going to throw this one away. That was well covered. Jackson Cawthon, who doesn't have the tackle numbers today, but he's done a good job in coverage. That time he covers up the back, Roberts, and Urzua just throws it away. Yeah, Cawthon uh, had a phenomenal last couple games here for the Pioneers, uh, coming up big in all sorts of ways, wanting to do it again today. He's got uh, a quarter to go. Urzua, the leading passer in yards per game in the conference at 181, has 199 yards today against the Pioneers, but also at two interceptions thrown at D. Alford. Next week I'll call him D. Alford because that's what Mama prefers. I'm still going to keep calling him Darth Vader if he's getting those interceptions. Second down and 10 for the Lions. Urzua to pass. This pass is going to be broken up and picked off. It'll be Nick Jackson, 40. Jackson to the 20. Jackson will be out of bounds as he gets near the 10-yard line for the Tusculum Pioneers. It is the third pick, and this comes after a tip pass by D. Alford, and Nick Jackson has it. Pioneers in business, and then a 15-yard penalty tacked on after it for taunting by the Pioneers. Yeah, that's uh, I'm guessing that's going to go against uh, Ivan Hogan's over there because he was in the mix with the Mars Hill uh, bench but either way the pioneers did a good job there on that interception that'll be nick jackson he made a gesture after the uh interception he either way will have it down to the 11 and the pioneers will have the ball now at around the 24 yard line again hidden yardage in a game you get the interception returns and that's just great defense once again by the pioneers Again, Alfred breaks up the pass, and then it was Jackson who takes it down to the 11. Pioneers will have it first and 10, though, at the 26 after the 15-yard penalty. Joaquin Colazzo runs into the huddle for the Pioneers. Back into the game. Glad to have Thurlow Wilkins back after a uh, slight knee check by Mike Hawkins. One wide out in the formation. Handoff, this will be Thurlow Wilkins. A little stutter step inside the 20, and he'll take it down to about the 16-yard line. He'll be stopped shy of the first by about a yard. It'll bring up second down and one as Wilkins with 124 rushing yards today. You know, whatever he had going on with his knee there earlier, obviously wasn't game-ending. He came back in first play, gets the football, and picks up almost 10 yards. Second down and a yard and a half, we'll call it. Bellinger will line up to the far side, waiting for the Pioneers instead of handing it off to throw it out there to Bellinger as they show this look. We're even come to this near side. Connor Johnston is in with Carter Mangle and Hunley as they all come back and line up, show power to this near sideline. The boundary side, they run away from that, give it to Wilkins, who runs between the tackles. He'll take it inside the 15, down to the 11-yard line, which is where the Pioneers were with the football prior to the penalty, and the tackle is made by Mars Hill's Mackay Forney, the sophomore from Richburg. It's first and 10 at the 12. And referees did confirm whenever they stepped off the penalty that was Nick Jackson who got the unsportsmanlike. like. So the Pioneers leading 17-7, to trying to take advantage of yet another turnover, another interception. This one, Nick Jackson's first. He has, there are three interceptions now on the day for Urzua, who only had eight coming in for the season. Bellinger lines up near side, and they'll turn around, hand it off to Wilkins, who has a little daylight at the 10, breaks a tackle at the 5 to the end zone. Touchdown, Pioneers. Touchdown, Thurlow Wilkins, not to be denied, gets in for Tusculum. He, he was hit twice, shoved guys out of the way. He did get some good blocking down the field, and the Pioneers are celebrating another touchdown here. Just a phenom. Beast. Thurlow Wilkins for this Pioneer football offense, which has injected life into this running game, which is definitely, after a very, very slow start to this game, is starting to pick up some momentum. Eli Shepard on to attempt. DeBusk to hold it, gets it down. The kick is up, and the kick is good. And just a side note, Dylan, probably not without the parents today because they're down in Murfreesboro watching Delana try for Greenville soccer and a state championship today. All right, uh, a lot of uh, athletics going on in, in the area here. Let's go to a break. Back in 30 seconds, 12.43 to play in the game. Pioneers 24, Lions 7. Pioneer football continues here on the Pioneer Sports Network. The first date. Only one chance to make that first impression. 
don't worry. This might be new for you, but Ingalls has been there before. From flowers to the freshest ingredients, we have everything you need to put your best foot forward. I'm so sorry. Remember, you can't get to happily ever after without once upon a time. Ingalls, all the ingredients for family. Tusculum University is tonight. I had those football scores updated, but uh, nothing's changed since we did it. So uh, Pembroke and LR, though, are tied at 24. So that's – you take a look at some of this other stuff that's going on. It's just crazy. That, that is. I mean, considering we've seen both of these teams with much different results. And Juski to punt it – to uh, kick it away, pardon me, after Thurlow Wilkins' touchdown run of 11 yards – to this near sideline, picked up by Ferguson at the 17. 20, 25, 30, and then is spun to the turf at about the 35-yard line by Ryan McIntyre. And a little more talking going on, a little more jawing going on as well after the three-play drive that Thurlow Wilkins scores from the 12, all Thurlow Wilkins, the 26 yards, all to him. Now 141 for the game. You almost have to wonder with uh, Lenore Ryan and UNC Pembroke if the Bears aren't having a little bit of a hangover all after uh, their big win last week over Wingate. A little letdown game for them, I think. Meaningless as far as South Atlantic Conference goes, but not meaningless if you're wanting to hang on to that, that, that uh, region ranking. You know, you saw Pembroke, and they're a good offense. Mm -hmm. That's just it. I, I, that's what it continues to impress me about this Pioneer defense week after week. Had just a little bit more luck early in the year. 24 to 7, Tusculum leads. Rucker's in motion. Alfred shadowing him. Urzua to pass, and he's looking maybe for the fourth pick. No, it goes through two sets of pioneer hands and even through Craig Rucker's hands incomplete. DJ, David Johnson, and D. Alfred were back there, and it's second and ten. Uh, that would have been really nice to see another interception right there for the pioneers because the way these guys have been playing today, it's. Uh, they struggled against Mars Hill's passing game there in the first half, and in the second half, Pioneer defense has done a heck of a job. So 24-7, to Tusculum. We've just blown everything up here. Penalty stayed up. Oh, there we go. Mars Hill. Thrown for 199 today. Urzua is going to go, try to go over 200 yards here. He's going to be under pressure. Pass across the middle. It's going to be incomplete. Rucker had it. D. Alfred knocked it away from him. And a beautiful defensive play by D. Alfred. It's third down. Yeah, that's uh, another great pass breakup by him. Reached through. They've tried that play several times. We've seen him intercept it now. We've seen him break it up. Uh, seen him get a pass interference. Uh, and all those are very similar plays. And he just does a phenomenal job. Look, we've seen a lot of great defensive players in our time in doing this. Ricardo Coakley, Jermaine Mack, those are just a couple of guys that he's chasing down. And all the other players that he's had, Laurente Archie, Rashawn Strickland, Rashawn Judge, remember him? Kevin Washington, just a lot of great defensive players. D. Alfred is in there among the best. Urzu is under some trouble, in some trouble. He's going to avoid the sack, get to the 40, and then be upended at about the 42-yard line. And penalty flags thrown after the play, and it will be 15 yards at the end of the play, which will bring it fourth down and about 15 coming up for Mars Hill. Yeah, that's going to be a late hit there on the uh, Mars Hill. The play was already blown dead, and you had one of the guys just up in one of Tuscan's players. Well, about more like fourth down and 20 because it should come after the play, after the player went down. It just depends. And if you do it during the play, if they throw, say, during the play, then you you negate this penalty and make it fourth and five. It's a dead ball. Yeah, so tack on 15 more. And so it's definite punting situation for Mars Hill with 12.04 left in the game. That, that penalty is going to go against Seth Branham, a senior out of uh, South Carolina. Move the ball back to the 28, fourth and 20, coming up for this Mars Hill Lion team. We are talking about Rashawn Judge. I was w waiting to say, if he was here today, he would not be happy because the main thing I remember about Rashawn Judge is he did not like cold weather. He did not like cold weather. <laughs> he, he came here from Alabama, and he told me on his very first day, he stopped down here at the gas station right next to the school and got out to get gas and said, it's too cold here. I'm going home. I'm done. Fourth 
Fourth down and 20. Fox gets away a weak punt. It'll hit at the 45 of the Pioneers and on die at the 42-yard line. And that's where the Pioneers will take over. First and 10, and there's extracurricular. Now just an all-out fight is happening. And now this guy's going to square up with one of the officials. That's real smart. And he was going at Malik Goodman, and Goodman was just trying to break free. And I think the right now cooler heads prevailing, the Pioneer coaching staff. And if you're Mars Hill's coaching staff, you got to get out here and take this under control because it's getting out of control. Uh, you started out, you had the late hit, cheap shot on the last one that got the penalty, and then now you've got the guys going in with this. It's causing fights. I think the penalty will go against either Goodman or Trey Spearman. I'm not sure who they'll get. And really, if there's two involved, let's just be real. It takes two to tango. It, it does, without question. And I, I think this could be a situation where they're offsetting as there's two players involved, but it is well after the play. But it's the fact that it's getting out of control. The unsportsmanlike penalties in this game is getting close to half a dozen. After the play was over, personal foul, flagrant personal foul. No, 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 no. There is no, there's no 77 on Tusculum. That's if it's 77, it's going on Mars Hill. It's Trey Spearman from Mars Hill. And it's it, it's flagrant unsportsmanlike conduct, and he said that the player is ejected, and now he they need to get situated which 77 that is and Mars Hill knew exactly and, and Spearman knew it was him as he's actually was heading to the locker room and now the officials are going to get together they said it was on uh, Tusculum number 77 Tusculum 77 is Jeremiah James who is a offensive lineman for the Pioneers would not have been out there on that particular play anyway he was hooked up with Malik Goodman but Trey Spearman was the man that was involved. He was number 77 for Mars Hill, and Max Melton has ruled this against the Pioneers. And they, they've got this all mixed up. Uh, when you get that much reaction, you, you know that there is something wrong. Yeah. These guys had the National Division II game of the week last week. And for the matter of fact, look here, number 77 for Tusculum. He's not even in. He's, he's not even in street. Yeah, he's, he, what, he's in street clothes and a hoodie with his jersey over his uniform. Jeremiah was has been out. He needs to go out and say, yeah. "Hey, here I am, 77. You want to get rid of me?" He needs to come right out. Yeah, Coach Odom needs to grab him by the shoulder and say, "Hey, look here." Are they still going to call it against Tusculum? Is the question. If so, that's Malik Goodman. This is going against Tusculum. These guys had the national game of the week last week. Thirties. All right, that's what it should have been. Uh, yeah. Two to tango. The, 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 they, they still the, got the wrong number. Yeah. That, well, they did come back and say 77 white and then come back and I think said 24 black. 30, yeah, 34 is what yeah. he said. It, okay. it should have been on 36, which is uh, okay. But these guys had the national game of yeah. the week last week. I, I still wish Coach Odom would have brought his 77 over there and say, look, Here's the guy hat. has on a hoodie, not a helmet. Yeah. All right, so first and 10 from the 41 after all of that. 24-7, Tusculum leads. The frustrating factor, they did get it right. Now Tim Clifton wants them to come out. I, I guess they called a flagrant personal foul on 77. So now have they changed that and he has not been ejected? That'll be the question for Tim Clifton. If it was just one guy, I guess it was flagrant. But since it's two, I guess it can't be flagrant? Um, who knows? This, this needs to be explained. Let's just play football and get yeah, out of here. I don't think, I don't think Spearman's going anywhere. He should just stay over there on the sideline. If he wants to come back in and play, I'll, I'll be for it. Let him come yeah, back uh, in. Person All right, here we go. First and ten. And now we're going to talk with Jerry. 
and bring it all the way over here. Meanwhile, there's stuff going on elsewhere in the league. Yeah, as we previously noted, Tuscan basketball getting wins today. The women winning 82-62 on the road at King. Tuscan men's playing Clayton State that game at LMU. The Pioneers win that 78-61. UNC Pembroke is taking a 31-24 lead in the third quarter over number seven and undefeated. Now, run. now Kyle Duggar went out of that game last week. So if he's not playing, that makes a lot of sense. I, I didn't think it made a whole lot of sense to begin with. But that makes a lot of sense then because Pembroke's offense is good. And also something of note, Limestone now has a 35-34 lead over Carson Newman. That is insane to me. <laughs> Absolutely insane. you got to love South Atlanta Conference football. First down and 10 for the Pioneers. All the conversations have ended. Ponder will go in motion across the formation. They toss it to him from the 40. Ponder 45-50. Ponder at the 35. Make that the 45 down to the 44-yard line. No flags. First and 10 Pioneers. Good job by Tory Ponder running that jet sweep again, getting some good downfield blocking there, and he was able to pick up the first down and move uh, pretty good ways into him. And, you know, that play's been more successful than you would think today. One stop, minus four. But outside of that, they've run it four times. Yeah. Three times have been very successful. So 11-15 and counting, 24-7 Tusculum. They have outscored Mars Hill 21 to nothing here in the second half and outscored them 21 unanswered since the first half. Hand off to Thurlow Wilkins. Wilkins trying to bounce his way off tacklers, does so, stops and tries to stay in play, and there is a flag thrown downfield. At the end of the play, and so this likely to be coming back as well. Again, it's getting testy here at Pioneer Field. And uh, Thurlow Wilkins just extending the play, just just going beast mode on us. Yeah, it is, and that's going to wind up being a hold against the Pioneers. So no dead ball stuff going on. It was just part of the football game. End of the run, which would be the 40, make that the 37-yard line. So move it back to the 47. Replay the down, so it's first down and 13. And our 24th penalty of the afternoon. I should have taken the over at 30. <laughs> Mars Hill came in, I know, with a lot to play for. And you're probably sitting there going, Brian, they were 5-4. and four. But when you look at just Division II rankings or, and records, they were 5-3, and three, tied for third in the league, with two three-loss teams ranked in the top ten. Mars Hill had a, 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 at least an argument to be in the top ten. Thurlow Wilkins, penalty flag flies. Wilkins leaps over one at the 40, down to the 20, and is thrown out of bounds there after the pickup of about, say, 17, 18 yards. It's a flag on the far side, and it's an illegal formation on the Pioneers. So back them up five more yards on the 25th penalty of the afternoon, replay first down. Meaning they had too many guys on the line of scrimmage. They have to have, what, four in the backfield. There were five, actually, in the backfield. So maybe somebody wasn't lined up. So another penalty against the two most penalized teams two of the top most penalized teams in the league. And their numbers nationally, when they say they say fewest penalties per game. Tusculum ranked 116 and Mars Hill 137. That's not good. And the fewest penalty yards per game. Tusculum ranked 136 nationally and Mars Hill 72. They picked up a lot of penalties, but not many penalty yards, Mars Hill. That is definitely different today. <laughs> Ten minutes to play. First down and 18. Give it to Wilkins again anyway. And he's hitting the backfield, and he's going to bounce off two tacklers, three tacklers, and then get up to about the 49-yard line. So he gains a yard after all of that. As a matter of fact, he was hit late. It'll bring up a second down and 17. We're talking about the standings and results and records and everything. If this score holds, which obviously at this point we certainly hope it does, and if Limestone holds on to defeat Carson Newman, that's going to move the Pioneers and the Eagles and Mars Hill into a three-way tie for third in the conference, setting up even more to play for in the clash next week down at Monster Creek. With Mars Hill taking on Wingate next week as well. So a lot on the line. If all these scores hold, it's craziness that's going on there in Gaffney with Carson Newman jumping out to the 21 to nothing lead. Right now they trail 35-34. Colazzo not even worried about downfield. He had nobody to throw to. Everybody was covered up, and he's actually going to lose only a yard here. But uh, 
you, you train your eyes to see what you see, and Mars Hill is not giving many first read options to Colazo, so he's he doesn't have a lot to throw to. No, he didn't have a lot to throw to. I would like to have seen him at least try to throw in the direction of somebody and just get rid of the football because it, the pocket kept closing in on him in slow motion. He couldn't get out of it, but he did have time. He could have gotten rid of the football. Jimmy Urzua just seems so poised in the pocket. He's had a good pocket all game. Pioneers have not provided that pocket for Colazzo or more today, for that matter. But they just do a lot of dancing around. Third and long, Colazzo to pass, looking for Bellinger, who catches it as he comes back to get it, and then he lunges for that first down marker, and I think he's going to have it on third and 19. He picks up 19 and a quarter. First and 10 Pioneers. They didn't even have to measure the uh, officials. They were spotting the football. He's, he's over there waving, so first down Pioneers. Big third down conversion and a good throw by Colazzo that time. It kind of hung up on him, and fortunately the defensive back fell down as well. And Bellinger makes the catch. We go over 100 yards passing for the day as well. And it's first down and 10 from the 34. Pioneers leading 24-7 to with 8 to play in the game. Colazzo out of the gun. Gamillion on his right shoulder. Mangle lines up as the tight end to this near side, and they toss it to Ponder once again. This time it's covered up pretty good. So the fifth time they've run it, and it's been better than not most times. And Ponder actually was stepped on as he was trying to get up by Mars Hill. And again, both sides have to be separated. Yeah, I think we could probably safely say in the next seven and a half minutes we're going to see another unsportsmanlike conduct penalty on one or both of these teams. And, and again, the officials today have thrown the unsportsmanlike quite often. It's not like they're allowing this to happen. No, I mean, they are they're calling the ones that, that they see. It's just none of them are on the same person. So everybody yeah. stay in the football game. And a lot of this is, you know, it's a little bit of, you know, they're, just, they're not seeing the right numbers. They're getting the right calls. They're just they're calling out the wrong names. Pioneers with three seconds to get the playoff. Under center is Colazzo. Hands it off. Maurice Gamillion running to the left side. He's just going to be covered up. And the ball came out, and they're saying it's still a live ball. There's a penalty after the play. It's gone downfield. Have they said he was down? I don't know, but the penalty will go against Tuscan. They're saying it's third down, and then there's a penalty well downfield. The Pioneers were blocking as they handed it off to Gamillion, and that's going to move him back 15 yards. Christian Culture was blocking downfield, I believe. Yeah, Culture was continuing to block downfield. And again, lots of times they don't call that if you're just blocking downfield, but maybe it came after the whistle. It did, and then also wh whether he shoved the Mars Hill player down or the Mars Hill player sold it, uh, he did take a tumble to the turf, so okay. that made it that much visible. So back to the Mars Hill 49, approaching the 30th penalty combined in the game. Both teams are over 100 yards in penalty yards, and now it's second down, or it should be third down and about 30. So Colazzo out of the gun, back to pass, looking, looking, throwing, complete to Gamillion at midfield, and that's going to be it. That's all he's going to get. D.J. Morgan out of Dadeville, Alabama, makes the stop. So it's fourth down for the Pioneers. I think. Oh, no, that's right. That penalty actually changed it. They actually accepted the penalty, so that was second down. So now it is third down. Sorry. Okay. So I was going to say, surely we're not going to add a extra down into this no, mess of a game today. That was right, because it happened during the play. They didn't say it was after that. Initially, I thought it was after the play, which is my, my point. They didn't call it after the play, but if it was an infraction, he's allowed to block downfield. It was a running play. And he's allowed to continue to do whatever he wants to during the play as long as it's within the leg legality of the game. And What is it? Now Max Melton is saying it is, in fact, fourth down. Well, they haven't changed the lollipop properly. They haven't really announced anything else that's going on. Max Melton says it is fourth down, so the punt team will come out. So it happened after the play. So, see, my point was proven right there. There you go. <laughs> happened after the play. So they reset the uh, play clock. They allow the punt team to get out. Cantrell had problems with it, but the rugby style is short. And we'll be inside the 15. It rolls inside the 10 and taken down to about the 7, maybe the 8-yard line. 
after Christian Bell was absolutely tackled, and he's almost disrobed on the floor on the on the field. Both of his shoulder pads are exposed. <laughs> yeah. Uh, right now, the main thing to can take into consideration is that Mars Hill has the ball inside the 10, and we have barely over five minutes remaining with Tuscum holding a 24-7 lead. Mars Hill's been shut out here in the second half. A touchdown that was given to them in the first half that after review, video review, he didn't get in. So you never know what may have or may not have happened. And those are just bad calls. That's just a bad call. I mean, it happened right in front of the official at the pylon. Didn't come close to getting in. Well, you know, turnabout's fair play because we're not entirely sure Tuscum got in either. Yeah, we're not sure PJ did. Good job, though, PJ. Handoff from Mars Hill. This will be Roberts who will get the carry from the 8. He'll take it across the 10 up to about the 14-yard line. Good thing about those running plays in this situation, the clock does continue to run, and we're getting closer to another victory here, what, four in a row for the Pioneers. Yeah, a beautiful day here in East Tennessee, beautiful sunshine, but it's cool, it's crisp out there, it's 50 yeah. degrees. One of the first real cold afternoons of the year. Another handoff. No, it's a pin and pull. And Erzu is going to be stripped by P.J. Green, who picks it up at the 5. Green to the 4. And Erzu keeps him out of the end zone. Strip sack for P.J. Green having a banner day today. Great job by P.J. Green there. He got the touchdown earlier uh, when we needed a big defensive score to get this thing started. And right there, he forced another turnover and got the Pioneers knocking on the door. P.J. lost his helmet and all of that. How about this young man right here? P.J. Green will graduate and be done December 14th and just having a great day here on Senior Day. He's going to be the guy I talk to after the game. All right, good job. He's got the radio experience. Yeah. <laughs> We've already decided. 427 to play. He may even, if we had, oh, by the way, we don't have our radio show Monday, but if we did, he'd be the guy that would be coming. And, and hey, they've got the uh, championship belt down there, and P.J.'s sporting it for the crowd for the second time. Fifth turnover by Mars Hill. Right now, though, the problem for the Pioneers, the four-yard line, and they're not going to get in here. Landon Honeycutt says, no, sir. So it's second and goal at the five. Mars Hill came out of there with, oh, they're going to say he does have it. Mars Hill comes out of there with the football at the five. That's D.J. Morgan. They're going to say he fumbled. I couldn't tell you it was a pile of people. Uh, but looking at the replay, however the ball came loose, no, that was back when yeah, that, that was, was PJ's play. That was PJ's play. DJ Morgan now has got a fumble recovery. I'm not even sure. I don't see how the officials could have seen that either. But they did. Either way. So it's first and 10, Mars Hill. They have it at the five. And again, in the red zone, another turnover inside the five. That's, uh, what, three today? Urzua is going to hand this one off. Roberts is going to be met right in the hole. And he'll still go forward for about two as Ivan Hogan's was there on the stop for the Pioneers. He and Solo. Solomon Hunter. Trying to look at the replay here. Thurlow Wilkins with the ball. Three on the oh, he's down. down seven. I, I, they can't see that. The line judge came running in, was blowing the play dead. Uh, that's, oh, man. Urzua back to pass. Under some pressure, but he gets rid of it, and it's going to be complete to the far side to Roberts running that wheel route out of the backfield, and it'll be enough for a first down. Jonathan Lowe over there on the stop at the 17. Three minutes, 40 seconds, uh, restarting the clock here left in today's game as the shadows coming from off the uh, indoor practice facility are getting quite long. Urzua with the three-pick day today. Now over 200 yards passing on that reception to Roberts. Back-to-back -back turnovers for the, the second time in two weeks and the second time in this game. This pass will be complete to the tight end at the 30 and up to the 31-yard line as the... Uh, Big tight end is Ty Snelson, sophomore out of Hot Springs, North Carolina. How about that Madison County High School product? I uh, probably saw him play. First down and 10. A couple years ago. At the 32 for the Lions. Urzua back to pass. Looking, looking, now under some pressure. Runs away from one. Swag Strickland trying to run him down. Won't get there. And Urzua 
thanks to a blatant hold in the backfield, will get up to the 39-yard line near the 40 to bring up second down and two. The best part of that play is it was actually Chris Roberts is the one that forced the quarterback out of bounds. And for those of you that don't know, Chris Roberts plays for Mars Hill. Roberts kind of got in his quarterback's way. David Johnson was credited with that tackle. Execution, execution, execution. Again, a lot of words we'll be hearing this week. Or zoo at a pass. Under some pressure, P.J. Green. Give him the belt again. Sack. First of the day against Urzua all the way back to the 33. Coach Clifton of the Lions calls timeout on the far sidelines with two minutes, 21 seconds left in the contest. I've already read it. I don't know, I don't, I don't know what else to read about P.J. Green. I mean, the guy's smart as attack. Athletic director's honor roll out of Lehigh floor. Uh, athletic director honor roll honoree. English journalism major from Savannah, Georgia. Commissioner's honor roll as well. 47 tackles in his 31 games coming into today. He had one fumble recovery. Today, Joey's doubled that. They gave him a hard time at the Pembroke game, by the way. They call it the P.J., where you just fall on it, where he could have picked it up, a scoop and score. He just fell on it because he didn't know what to do. So today, he's got two scoops. He's got one score and almost had another. Almost had another one and then got the big sack on our Zua. So, uh, what better way to finish senior day here, your last game at Pioneer Field with a big, uh, big game. Yeah, we may be biased a little bit because he helps us out on the Pioneer Sports Network. The voice of lacrosse and women's volleyball would be doing would be doing men's volleyball if he was here. I think he's going to have my November 30th basketball game because I want to get him some experience doing that as well. Uh, Tuskegee and Katawa. He's going to get a chance to be interviewed. So you know he's he's been doing a lot of interviews. Now we're going to see how he handles an interview. See if he can maintain yeah. poise being the one having to be put on the spot to answer questions as he does yeah. be the one doing that, asking. So Mars Hill asking for the timeout. PJ's having a banner day for this Pioneer defense. Four tackles, two for loss, one sack, a strip sack, and a score, a defensive touchdown. And Carson Newman come back to beat Limestone 42-35. Oh, they were lucky. Third down and nine, or Zua to pass. Again, under some pressure right up the middle by Strickland. The pass across the middle is complete to Ty Snelson, the tight end right at midfield. So just scrambling around and getting the first down is Urzua extending the play. And that was really, Jerry Odom had hoped to move him off the spot because he wasn't as accurate. But he's been very accurate running, the, running and throwing. Uh, other score of interest is still tied up 31-31 between Pembroke and, Lon- and Lenore Ryan. Oh, they're in the third. Or Zua to pass, he's just going to throw this one out of play. That'll be incomplete. Yep, two minutes remaining in the third quarter at, at Hickory, and that game tied at 31. Under two to play here as Mars Hill is, I think that last pass may it nope. He's 265 yards of offense to the Pioneers, 279. Yeah, I do think they're over 300 yards offense now, but that's... That's also a bit of a change. The Pioneer defense. How about that? I tell you what, Jerry Odom can dial it up. He dialed up a uh, nickel package this week, and he put D. Alford then shadowing Craig Rucker. And it's been the Craig Rucker show a lot this year, and knock on wood, we'll see what happens here in the final few seconds or so as Tim Clifton has to burn a timeout. Talk about uh, actually, they're just going to take the penalty. Talk about offensive numbers. Over. Look at Clazo. He's 12 of 16 today passing. Sorry. That's all right. 12 of 16, 103 yards and a touchdown for Joaquin Colazzo and the Pioneers. You know, the idea was not to uh, throw the ball away, get interceptions. We didn't, but we fumbled it twice in the red zone. Second down and 15 for the Lions. They took the penalty instead of burning a timeout. Urzua steps up in the pocket, and this pass is going to be broken up as Nick Jackson will continue the tackle, and that's unfortunate. That really is unfortunate. Jackson didn't realize that the ball had been dropped. As Gilbert Johnson was upset with the way he was taken down, it will be a penalty on Jackson. But it is, that's the unfortunate part. It's a necessary penalty way, the way the game has gone. But it's unfortunate because he's just finishing the play. Yeah, he was. I mean, he kind of had the ball carrier wrapped up and was, they were going to the ground when the whistle blew. So it wasn't like it was just some blatant after-the-fact hit. 
But either way, the net result's the same. It's going to be a 15-yard penalty against Tusculum. Yeah. Well, they're going to say it's after the play, too, which is, again, that's very unfortunate because you're asking somebody to shut it down in the in the midst of a tackle yeah. and not make a tackle. Well, I mean, you see the same thing with college football now where they've gotten about, like, all these penalties against quarterbacks. you got some big 300-pound guy coming at a head of steam. He can't just stop on a dime. And, you know, same thing here. Whenever you've already got somebody off the ground, your momentum is going to carry you back to the turf. First down and 10 at the Pioneer 40. Another penalty in this football game, which is going to take us to 28. Herzu is under pressure, avoids it somehow, spins, and then takes a pretty good shot. He's down down at the 38-yard line, is able to uh, pick up two yards, but the clock will run 90 seconds on the game clock. Uh, in this situation, if, if Mars Hill Smart, Coach Clifton, when we know he's been around long enough, just run a couple plays, you can't overturn the result and don't get anybody, you know, don't start any more fights. Pioneers looking for win number four. And the way this clock shows, they're going to get it today and get their third straight against the Mars Hill Lions as well. It'll be Urzua under some pressure again. It'll be dropped. Devin Woodson, another one of those seniors coming up with a big play for the Pioneers. And Mars Hill calls a timeout with minute three remaining. Devin Woodson getting that hit. I think they're going to give him a half yard, so I'm not sure they'll count it as a sack. But Devin, 70 tackles for his career, eight for losses. If they do give it a sack, I will. That'll be four sacks for his career. A COSIDA Academic All-District Team honoree, the D2 Athletic Directors Association honor roll, exercise science major, member of the commissioner's honor roll from Central South Carolina, Devin Woodson, just a phenomenal career and a, a super guy to talk to as well. He's going to be good people. He's going to be a great ambassador for this, for this school. And the Pioneers are going to go off to their fourth straight win. They're going to go into Mossy Creek with a chance to go six and five. You know, a lot to play for right there. You're not playing for a conference championship. You're not playing for a spot in the playoffs is what you're playing for is perhaps to knock your greatest yeah, rival yeah. out of the playoffs, but more importantly to finish up for a winning season for Coach Jerry Odom and the Pioneers. And listen, this senior class is going to be the first senior class to not have a losing record against Carson Newman, no matter what happens next Saturday. So they could be the first senior class to ever win a game at Mossy Creek. Let's just put it that way. To yeah, ever yeah. win a game at Mossy Creek. Because 1934 doesn't count for me. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure that... Uh, we weren't around then. Yeah. Third down and eight. One timeout remaining for Mars Hill. 103 to play. Urzua has been under immense pressure since they crossed midfield. 19 of 37, 240 yards, three picks on the day. Pin and pull. He'll roll the pocket to the right side, looking for some yardage, and he's going to be stopped just shy of the sticks at about the 31, and with one timeout remaining, I believe Tim Clifton's going to burn it. Can't clock it. It's fourth down. So they're going to try to get to the line of scrimmage quickly with 44 seconds to play, and just pray you don't get anybody hurt as Clifton is screaming. Of course, no one can hear him even though he's screaming. And they are going to hand it off, and this will be Roberts, who will have the first down at the 30, maybe the 29, Malik Goodman with that stop for the Pioneers. And that is a first down for Mars Hill. And a timeout for Mars Hill. Did they turn it over? What are we doing? I'm not real sure. We're dancing around like we've done something. But if we did, I feel sure that Mars Hill called a timeout. We were dancing around like we'd done something really special there. All right, so timeout and just a, a little bit of housekeeping. There will be no Tusculum football radio show on Monday. It's Veterans Day where Applebee's provides free meals to veterans. So because of that, the, the restaurant will be so packed, they need all the space they can get. We won't have the radio show through Facebook Live either on Monday. We will have the TV show. So no radio show this week. And then following the Carson Newman game, we'll do one more radio show to make that up. And I'm still wondering what all the defense was kind of... Maybe they're just excited. Maybe they know they're going to win. 28 seconds left uh, once this thing gets back underway. Oh, that was a huge hit. And based on that, Malik Goodman, he didn't get to the 30. 
Goodman felt like he made the stop as I see why they're talking about it now. Yeah, uh, but as it is, Marshall scrimmaging from the 29 yeah. with the first first down. 28 seconds to play. Urzua to pass, and he's looking downfield for Rucker. They run a nice little rub for him, but the pass as Urzua was under immense pressure by Colton Strickland, another senior, and P.J. Green, who's had a banner day. With 22 seconds to play, several Mars Hill people already exiting at the seating area. Uh, trying to get a jump start to get yourselves back across the mountain. Either that or get them a good position to say hi to their son yeah, as they come off the field. That's the thing about Division II football. You don't really just go ahead and leave the stadium. You go ahead, I got to get down there first and see him as he comes off the field. Second down and 10 from the 29, 22 seconds to play. Blitz comes. Urzua stands in the pocket, delivers to his tight end. Snelson, who's going to be brought down at the 24, and the clock's going to run. They may not have enough time. Jonathan Lowe brings him down. So Mars Hill gets to the line quickly. This game changed on the... Backward lateral recover for a score by the Pioneers. And under center comes Urzua with two seconds to play, and he clocks the ball. So it's going to be fourth down for Mars Hill. So right here, uh, Mars Hill is just trying to get more than seven points, and you're the Pioneers. You want to essentially su- give a second-half shutout. So the Pioneers are going to uh, buckle up and play here and hopefully not let Mars Hill close this gap, even though it is going to be a victory no matter what. Appreciate so many people listening today, including Ron Metcalf. You could be really nice and bring one of those to Joe and I here in the booth. That would that would be that would actually be the really good thing to do. Very much so. Yeah. Fourth down. Here's the ball game. Urzua to pass. Just going to lob it for the corner of the end zone. And this one was going to be knocked away. The game is over. The Pioneers win. The Pioneers win as they defeat the Mars Hill Lions for their fourth consecutive win. And they get their third straight against their rivals from North Carolina. Just a great win here for the Pioneers to come back uh, and win this football game. Got a lot of big plays. Now let's just get guys off the field. Let them shake hands and clear the way and this could be a little dicey as there's already been a lot of chitter chatter with a lot of things that is going on so this could be rather interesting the line isn't necessarily forming it's just kind of a little mass huddle that's happening right here in the middle of the field i think both teams realizing what's going on and you know what let's just shake hands and let's get on home yeah the best thing to do for everybody Pioneers get their fourth straight, go to 5-5. Five and five. They dash any hopes that Mars Hill had of making a postseason run. And one of the most dynamic players in school history, the record breaker in the South Atlantic Conference in receptions per game, came into today against Tusculum, held to under 100 yards receiving for his career. Today, he has four catches for 59 yards. He did have the touchdown. That was ruled the touchdown. But let's also be real. Upon further review, he was down at the one-and-a-half-yard line as his knee went down before he crossed the line. As it is, Craig Rucker is going to have a phenomenal, phenomenal career and a lot of great numbers. But against Jerry Odom, he's not going to have those numbers. No, and that's uh, Coach Odom, the Pioneers, started out slow with the, the losses against some very good teams but have played really, really well here in the last four. Defense has played fantastic for a fourth consecutive week the offense did just enough 279 yards today they ran for 165 as Thurlow Wilkins goes for 149 his third straight game over 100 yards and gets his third straight game with the touchdown as well as they call him the freak Thurlow Wilkins 24 carries a 6.2 yard average today and the Tusculum Pioneers knock off Mars Hill in the 36th renewal of the rivalry the Tusculum Pioneers get this victory, the 21st in the series. And Tusculum wins the Battle of Sam's Gap. And we've still got the rock. If we played for that, we'd still have the rock. But we're not close enough in proximity. We ask that you stay tuned for the Pioneer post game, And thanks to all of those who have tuned in today to Pioneer football. Your final score, Tusculum at 24 and Mars Hill 7. This has been Pioneer Football Senior Day on the Pioneer Sports Network.